gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Double play ends the top of the first inning, and the Hawkeyes will step into the batter's box in the bottom of the first after holding the Dewhawks to nothing in the top half. Here's the batting order for Iowa this afternoon. Gable Mitchell, he'll lead things off. The Hawkeyes shortstop, Raider Tello batting second. Keaton Anthony is in there at third. Brennan Derigi is the cleanup hitter for the Hawks. Batting fifth is Sam Peterson. Sam Honar right behind him in sixth. Seven, eight, nine. Chase Mosley out and right. Braden Frazier in left. Gary Christensen will bat ninth. All right, Davis Pasco on the mound for Loris. Right-handed pitcher as Mitchell's into the box. So the first pitch to him, squares to bunt, throws it down the left, uh, the third baseline, picked up by the pitcher and thrown to first for out number one. Mitchell tried to get creative with the bunt for hit attempt, but no cigar that time. Yeah, good day. I mean, obviously this is a good day to play small ball and especially uh, especially Gable, but you know, just got that ball a little bit too close to the pitcher. When he was batting left-handed, I almost would have preferred to see him drag it down the first baseline instead. Uh, first baseman was back and, and maybe create some traffic and, and confusion. Here's Raider Tello. First pitch to him is a called strike on the upper and outer portion of the zone. Tello's a right-handed hitter. He's hit safely in all six Iowa games so far. Quietly, we, we should probably stop saying quietly. Uh, he's having a great year, great start to his Hawkeye career. The 0-1 pitch is a called strike on the outside corner. 0-2. Yeah, 296 so far, um, just one extra base hit, but, you know, had two of the three hits uh, Friday night against Sam Houston when, when Hawkeyes were having a hard time getting hits. 0-2, strike three called. Outside corner, Tello was fooled that entire at bat uh, to see what he comes up with his next time up. Didn't get the bat off his shoulder there, two away in the... Hawkeye first, and and we saw uh, this pitcher for Loris Pasco. We saw him last year. He was pretty good for them. Yeah, and uh, going back to Raider real quick, you know, he was very aggressive in the Kansas State game. You know, he swung at pitches, was uh, really getting after it, and that time he took what looked to be three very good pitches there. Keaton Anthony stands in, takes one belt high for a called strike. Anthony's the Big Ten Player of the Week, the first of his career. He's got a five-game hit streak going. The hero in the game against Kansas State, giving Iowa the lead in the ninth. Anthony drives this one deep to center. Left center now, looking back at the wall, and it is gone. It's a home run for Keaton Anthony. Boom. We saw that same thing. That was uh, that was how the Hawkeyes started the LSU game. The top two hitters made outs. Um, Keaton came in, poked one, to, poked one to right field. Then he put that one out pretty much over center. Um, and Keaton's... Keaton has a lot, has a reputation for wanting to hit it to right field. The home run you mentioned against Kansas State on Sunday was actually he got the barrel and turned on a on a 95 mile an hour fastball and hit it into left and got that one out over the center field wall. Iowa won. Loris nothing in the bottom of the first. Here's Derigi laying off a pitch that misses outside to him. Derigi had a nice uh, outing in uh, Round Rock. He was outstanding yeah. in the LSU game. Swings at this pitch, sends it back out of play to the left side. Boy, going back to that home run for Anthony, that one was in the air also super high. We had to crouch down to, to pick it up coming down. Yeah, he really, really drove that one out there. Going to Derigi here, 364 in the early going. Um, he's got uh, his eight hits so far, and five of those are for extra bases. So really showing some some good pop and, uh, you know, exactly what you want as, as the uh, – as the next first baseman behind Peyton Williams last year. Two and one is the count. Missing inside now, three and one. Yeah, that three, home, three run homer against LSU absolutely crushed that one. Yeah, he, had, he hit two balls. He had a line drive an inning or two before that that he just demolished as well. And so 3-1 sends this one deep to left, carrying well, back at the wall, and gone again. Ho-ho! 
It's a home run for Brendan Derigi as the Hawks go back to back in the first. Pretty good, uh, you know, really stayed on it. Good fastball in the outer half. And, um, you know, we kind of joked about it a little bit before the game when we found out that, that Pasco was going to start. And, you know, the start last year, you're, you're a D3 starter and, you know, you, you shut out the Hawkeyes last year. You know, I, I might have hung my hat on that one and called it good. And Hawkeyes were trying to make sure that didn't happen again here with uh, two really good swings of the bat. Well, here's Peterson swinging at the first pitch over there in foul territory down the first baseline back into play now and unable to make a play as the first baseman. Cohen crushes, uh, crashes into the half wall down the right field line out of play. Peterson with an aggressive hack. Uh, get new life here. Owen one. Yeah, but to your point, uh, uh, they go back to the well with this pitcher, and so far Iowa has more runs in the first inning than we had against him at all last year. Yeah, more more runs and only one hit short of where they were last year. Peterson takes this next one, a breaking ball that floats inside one and one. And just looking at his stuff early, though, he's added he's added three or four miles an hour to his fastball. It feels like his curveball is about the same, um, but again, he's going to be. In his league, um, they're picked second in the in the ARC. He's he'll 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 get people out. Sure. One and two is the count to Peterson. Two away in the Hawkeye first. Iowa two. Loris nothing. Here comes the one two to Sam. Low and outside. Ball two. Good job holding up there. Sam was. Sam is an anxious hitter. He wants to swing the bat. Wants to get after it. So, you can kind of tell. You know, he was he was triggered and ready to go there, but held up. 2-2 two, two from Pasco. It hit him. Inside, two-seam fastball looked like that just kept running and running and running, and it hit Peterson. He took it, and so he'll stand on first. You got to be careful taking pitches uh, to the body today. It's cold. It's going to hurt. I was joking with Coach Heller before the game uh, with, with the temperatures the way they are. You got to have good batting gloves today, and you hope that nobody runs one inside and you hit one off the handle. Yeah, you want to you wanna barrel it up today. If you catch one off the cap or you catch one in on the handle, you're going to have the bees going through for sure. Yeah. Here's Sam Honar. He'll stand in from the left side watching the first pitch go by a called strike on the outside corner sam's had just a, a little bit of a spotty start to the season you're just hitting 143 so far but really it really is a solid bat when he gets going big a lot of room in left center as honar sends us on the ground and through into right field base hit peterson round second headed for third there goes the helmet here comes the throw and he is safe great throw by the right fielder on a line, a one-hop into the third baseman who couldn't quite corral it. He knocked it down. But okay. Peterson is on third safely after the two-out single from Honar. Benedetto came up, and that was a fantastic throw into third base. Problem was it just caught a hop, right? Uh, caught an awkward hop to the third baseman because I think if the third baseman is able to make the catch, he can drop the tag right on Petey, and he'll be out there. But uh, outstanding play, but as it is, running on the corners with two out now. Here's Chase Mosley looking to get going. His first season with the Hawks, first pitch to him, swing and a miss. Big swing on that one. That one came in at 66 miles an hour. Yeah, there's uh, there's slow curve and then there's slow curve, and that one had the that one had all the O's in it. Chase down in the count, 0 and 1, the seven hitter for the Hawks with runners on the corners and two outs. Next pitch, swing and a miss again. This one. A few more miles an hour on it. 69 went in there. 0 and 2 with two away in the first. Yeah, the the thing is, you know, he's throwing those. They're really good pitches. I mean, they're he's moving around in the zone, but but he's finding the 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 strike zone. So now you got to be ready. Is he going to gas you back up at 83 here? Pasco ready. The 0-2 to Mosley is high. Runner goes from sec uh, to second. Honar is safe, and Peterson will score on the backside. The double steal is on for the Hawks, and they get another run. It's three to nothing. Yeah, the Hawks really didn't. That wasn't an aggressive double steal. That was just that was just taking second base when you had a chance. And then when the throw was high and, and they let it go through, it allowed uh, it allowed an easy jog in from third. Iowa three, Loris nothing. The count to Mosley is now two and two. This pitch misses inside. Yeah, good job from Chase, kind of fighting back. He took the fastball high there on, on 0 and 2 and then took the breaking ball again on the inside half of the plate to even it up at two. To see Chase Barrel one up right here. Next pitch, lifted in the air, shallow right. Right fielder coming on, second baseman going back. Right fielder is there. He'll grab it for the third out 
of the inning. Chase just missed that one, but the Hawks get three runs in the bottom of the first inning. They lead Loris three to nothing as we head to the second. Back right after this, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by the University of Iowa. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of the university and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by the university. Top of the second inning from Dwayne Banks Field in Iowa City. Iowa 3, Loris nothing. Good uh, start from Jack Whitlock. One inning pitched. Got all three Loris batters uh, out eventually with the double play to end the first. But Iowa will go with a, a new pitcher for this inning, turning things over to Nick Gatilla for the Hawks. Yeah, Nick, the left-hander, is is actually one of the uh, uh, one of the few guys that will pitch today that has pitched this year. So he's thrown twice already. Um, hasn't given up a run in two appearances. Uh, was part of the shutout, thrown uh, one and a third innings. Um, hasn't given up a hit yet. Did walk a couple guys. So um, he's not. Uh, he may not have some of the first game nerves that some of the other some of the other pitchers will have that come in later. We've liked what we've seen from Nick so far. He kind of has that sweeping left-handed delivery. Yeah, he, he gets over on the first base side. Really comes in. First pitch to Daniel Rogers is fouled back to the screen. You know, and, and Iowa doesn't have a ton of left-handed pitching. So you know, obviously Jared Simpson is is an outstanding left-hander. Um, Nick's a good addition to the staff to, to trust and go to here as, as a such strong lefty option. Feels like he's got a little bit of junk in his in his pitches, too. Maybe a little uh, break here or there that might cross up a couple of hitters. One and one is a count to Rodgers. Next one on its way, sliced back to the screen, one and two. Yeah, and then, then you see something like that where he... he yeah, the key isn't necessarily how hard you throw it. It's, it's how much variation in speed do you have. Um, and so you're seeing, you see good variation in his speed. One, two, swing and a miss. High heater, and Rodgers chased it out of the zone. He is the first out of the Laura second. Yeah, he's, he's going to be able to bring it up there. The upper 90s may touch 90 every once in a while. But then again, that off speed, that, that slider curveball comes in there at at uh, high 70s, and it's just hard to hard to sit on one or the other. One away in the Loris, top of the second. First pitch is swung on and missed by the right fielder, Nick DiBenedetto. I'm going to get that name right one of these times, John. DiBenedetto. There you go. I'm thinking of the professional outfielder. Next pitch is just outside, one and one. DiBenedetto. How about that? There you go. All right. Rolls off the I'll top. get it right. We've all been there. <laughs> the 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss, 1-2. and two. That's why I like this color job better than the play-by-play -play job. You're the one stuck with all that. If I don't like it, I just call him number five. Oh, shoot. One ball and two strikes. Gatilla's ready. Here it comes. This is low and in. Blocked nicely by Christensen. And this is a pretty good, uh, you know, Gehrig missed last season with injury, and, you know, he's back, so... Nice to see him getting some play and some run. 2-2 two -two lined off the end of the bat into the Iowa bullpen down the line and right. Foul. 2-2 two and two will do it again. See if Gatilla can get another one of those strikeouts. Here's the pitch. 
Lined into shallow right center. Honar goes back. He's got a beat on it as three Hawkeyes converge. Sam's got it for the second out of the inning. Yeah, Hawkeye outfielders are, uh, I guess the, the best way to say it is there's a, there's a lack of respect for power at this point. So they were rolled in there pretty good. So even though he fisted that into what a lot of times might be a, kind of a dead zone in the defense, Sam was able to get there, and, and both outfielders were, were tracking it as well. Third baseman Ryan Wollers is in there now. Takes the first pitch inside for a ball. Right-handed hitter with open stance. Swings and fouls off the next pitch. Over towards the Iowa dugout. First base side, one and one. Another one of those hitters off to a great start. If I, if I read my, read my uh, Duhawk website well, he was the player of the week, utility player of the week in the conference for... For Loris. Hit 444 last week and hit a couple home runs, so had a great opening weekend. Yeah, he's slated down in the sixth spot. 2 1, swing and a miss. 2 and 2. Catilla in a good spot here with the Loris lineup. Two down in the top of the second. Iowa leading 3 0. And as you've rattled through the class here, this is a very experienced team. You know, two and two is swung on and missed. We'll get back to the. Uh, Loris experience after we uh, get through this break to take us to the bottom of the second. Good job there by Gatilla. Doubt we see him in the in the third, but a couple of strikeouts for Nick. Good job, Mr. Gatilla. To the bottom of the second we go. Iowa three, Loris nothing. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Opal, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. Bottom of the second inning, Iowa three, Loris nothing. Hawks coming to the plate. They'll go eight, nine, and one. They'll face a new pitcher. We'll get to him in a minute. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants and more, just minutes south of Iowa City. All right, just like Iowa did uh, defensively, Loris will go with a new pitcher for this inning in the second. They'll go with... Uh, Max Weissvilla, second appearance of the season for him. He does have a win, so he's 1-0 with a 7.2 ERA. Started one game through five innings, gave up four earned, seven hits. He struck out six, though. He's a left-handed pitcher, operates out of the stretch, and Braden Frazier will get the first look at him as the pitch is outside to Braden. Braden's out there and left today for the Hawks. Yeah, Braden hitting 333 on the year. Has a home run, just an absolute shot in the ninth inning there. As he hits this one on the ground to second, scooped up nicely there and thrown over to first to retire Frazier. Against LSU. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to make sure we finish that thought because that was the cherry on top to a great win over top-ranked LSU down in Texas. What feels like a few days ago, uh, and because it was, but uh, we Moving along nicely now with today's game, and then we're in Alabama this weekend. Here's Garrett Christensen, left-handed batter, the catcher for the Hawks. Christensen, Richard Freshman from Urbandale, 6'1", 185. Next pitch to him is inside, 2-0. and out. Yeah, first career at bat here, and I think that yeah, there's a... There's a lot of potential here, you know. He just he's got the he's got the look when you yeah. when you just kind of follow him around and hang around with him. He he knows what he's doing. Strong build, the 2-0, low and outside, 3-0. I'd like to see Garrett get a shot to swing the bat this time around. 
Yeah, and he'll probably be in the game for a while. You know, you're probably not going to go to Cade or or Ben uh, just because they're your mostly your weekend guys. So Gary will probably get a lot of run along with uh, Wilmus, maybe. 3 0 is outside, four pitch walk. And so Christensen is on. He, he, I think he might have thought that, that was going to be a strike. He stayed in there for an extra second. Yeah, you know, a lot of guys are selling it to the umpire. I think maybe there's the, oh, I, I don't mind staying and swinging, <laughs> sir. I'll, I'll hang around here for a minute if you want me to. Turn things over to the top of the order. Here's Gable Mitchell. Gable is a switch hitter. He saw a righty the first time, lefty this time, so he moves over to the right-handed batter's box. First pitch is a call and strike on the outside corner. I haven't got a chance to ask Gable yet. You know, ha haven't had a chance to talk to him much to find out you know, if he has a preferred side or if it's just give me a bat and I'm ready to go. 0-1 is inside for a ball. You talk, you, you talk about guys that, that look the part. Gable certainly looks looks the part in the Hawkeye black and gold in that middle infield. Yeah, and you know, it, I think it was, uh, we'll finish this pitch and then. Christensen takes off. This is a ground ball to short. Christensen safe at second. They'll throw it across to first to retire Mitchell. So a hit and run opportunity. Move Christensen up to second there, but two down for the Hawks. Yeah, the little hit and run kept you out of the double play there. And, you know, Gable's energy and enthusiasm is what, you know, he, He's going to be a fan favorite as the year goes along. You know, we, I gave him a little grief in the LSU game. There was a play at second base, and really, you know, you're making a mistake with energy, and you'll always take that. Iowa three, Loris nothing in the bottom of the second. Here's Raider Tello swinging at the first pitch, and over the second baseman's head. Christensen will score, and Tello's got an RBI single to make it 4 nothing. Yeah, we talked about how hot he'd been, um, how aggressive he'd been at the plate, and then... He takes three called strikes uh, to walk back to the dugout in the first inning. They are very aggressive, jumps on the first pitch. Um, didn't get all of it, but flared it over the second baseman's head uh, for an RBI single. John, just the way it looked to me, that was one of those that was in on the hands. Yeah. I think Raider might have been frustrated with his first at bat. Here's Anthony, swings hard at the first pitch and sends it to the right field and fouling out of play 0 and 1. Yeah, I think that was in on the hands right there. That one might have hurt Raider, but he drives in a run. And Anthony, you know, he hit the the what turned out to be the game-winning home run in the ninth, but Tello just missed yeah. the out before that. And in talking to him, I said, "Did you did you just get under it?" And he said, "No, I just capped it just a little mm -hmm. bit." So, you know, he just barely missed the barrel. He knew it right away and but was hoping that uh Maybe the wind would blow a little bit more and finish off the last 10 feet for him. Tello's at first. Anthony is the batter watching this one miss outside one and one. Two down in the Hawkeye second. Iowa already out in front for nothing. Anthony had the home run deep to what started in center, moved a little bit over to left center with the wind. One, one, swing and a tapper foul. One and two. And this is kind of what you've wanted to see out of the Hawkeye bats. You know, come be... Come be aggressive. The Hawkeye pitchers have gone right after hitters. You know, they've been in the strike zone. You know, obviously a game you're supposed to win. Go go do what you're yeah. supposed to do and, and look good doing it. Tello takes off for second. Here's a base hit in the right field. Tello round second, headed for third. And Anthony's on with a single with two outs in the Hawkeye second. You know, with two strikes, Hawkeye's able to go a little hit and run, figuring that he's going to get a strike and, and – uh, uh, and so you're able to start the runner. Keaton's a good a good contact guy, and I mean, if he strikes out, it doesn't really matter with what Tello's doing. But good good time to start the runner, and boy, this is a pretty good hitter to have a couple on for. Yeah, here comes Dereggi, who went back to back with Keaton in the first. So far, I was doing a nice job executing their small ball, their their base running, uh, aggressive base running. First pitch to Dereggi is a breaking ball that loops in for a called strike. That one comes in at 75 miles an hour. Yeah, you've had good small ball action. You've had good, uh, good long ball action with yeah. the two home runs in the first. So really, all you all you're looking for here. Brennan is all eyes on this one inside one and one. Runners on first and third for Iowa, leading Loris four nothing. Second inning. Yeah, Dre up to three ninety one with the home run in the in the first inning. Good discipline on that one. Outside ball two. I feel like Dorigi will have a lot of fun with the right field uh, if, you know, if he turns into more of a pull hitter. 2-1 pitch, called strike at the knees, 2-2. Two two. The 327 uh, out there to right. And, uh, got a few Hawkeyes in 
past in, in, in recent history that like that right field wall with some power. Yeah, you're not going to want to park in the upper parking lot <laughs> spots up there. 2-2 two, two on its way to Dorigi, tapped foul. Good job staying alive there. Was a little out on his front foot with the breaking ball, but was able to make contact. I suppose if you're going to make any argument, that's probably uh, that's probably the only thing you could you could say right now about his approach at the plate is you know eight strikeouts with mm -hmm. the nine hits, but um, the nine hits have been pretty strong. Check on Anthony at first. He's about a step and a half off the bag. <laughs> Yeah, it seemed like the whole dugout knew to yell back, so they had a pretty good read on the move. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Viceville is ready. Here it comes to Dorigi. Inside almost hit him. The count is full. Yeah, that'll put Anthony in motion and give him a head start. Quite a bit of room in right center. If Dorigi could pick where he wanted to put it, they'll check on Anthony, knowing that he's going on the pitch. He's back there without a slide. Keaton's not exactly a base stealer, so he's not <laughs> he's not trying to get the first move going here. 3-2, Dorigi on the ground to first. Blocked nicely by Cullen over there at first, and he'll touch the bag himself. Good job by the Loris first baseman. There. The Hawks get one in the bottom of the second. It's 4 nothing as we get to the third. Listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Top of the third inning from Dwayne Banks Field in Iowa City this afternoon. Iowa four, Loris nothing. Hawks will go to the bullpen once again, keep the train moving. It's Chaz Wheatley coming in, sophomore right-handed pitcher. Tall drink of water, 6'6", six six, 215, from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Nine appearances, 1-0 uh, and with a 435 ERA last year for the Hawks. Yeah, I was talking to him, uh, I was talking to him in the outfield uh, during batting practice, and and he's he's all that six six. <laughs> Boy, and just getting a look at him, work on that downward angle, right? Uh, but we'll see where he delivers the ball from. If he's more of an over the top guy, or a little bit more uh, side arm. Yeah, he's more out about ten thirty or so. A little bit, a little bit, not full side arm, but but out there a little bit. Coach Heller was excited about uh, seeing Chaz here this afternoon. Yeah, you know, he threw 10, 10 innings last year, 10 and a third innings as a freshman. So, um, yeah, he got some midweek action last year, too. You know, this year, um, with some of the new arms that came in, wasn't on, uh, wasn't on the travel squad with us to Texas, but I'm sure he'll be looking to try to break his way back into it. When we talked to Coach McGrath earlier uh, in the pregame portion of this broadcast, this is the nature of the beast as a bullpen guy. You, you might just get one inning, right? And so to come in right away and show us what you got, um, that's that's what these uh, Hawkeyes are, are looking to do when they come out of the bullpen because that's what happens in, in really any other game, not just the first one of the season, right? Yeah, if 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 you're called on, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, the, the top of the seventh inning and you're coming in clean or you're coming in clean with a couple run or you're coming in with a couple runners on, you've got to come in and throw strikes and do your job. And that's what their jobs are now is, hey, come in and throw the third inning for us and get it done. Top of the third, Iowa leading Loris 4 nothing. Here's Tyler Pransky, the de designated hitter. Counts 1-1 one and one as Wheatley is ready for the next one. 
fouled back to the pad, one and two. Well, Pransky, another one of those guys hitting 429. Um, limited at bats so far. He's he's started all or he started three of the four games over the weekend, but has has just seven at bats or yeah seven at bats because he walked four times. So a good eye at the plate. One two stays alive, keeping it off the net to the right side. So he's got pretty good uh, discipline. He can hang in there. And you, you mentioned the walks that he's had. Not chasing after stuff out of the zone. One ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch from Wheatley. This one's fouled out of play to the right side. We'll do it again. And a guy that draws a lot of walks tends to be a guy that can foul off some pitches. Keep at bats alive, you know, work it. You know, he's still down one and two here, but if he keeps... You know, if you can make Chaz miss, then it's two and two. You know, you just kind of work your way through it, or maybe you put one in play and you single somewhere. Challenge here for Wheatley. Breaking ball had a lot of movement on it, but it just missed inside. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody out in the top of the third. Iowa leading Loris, 4 nothing. Yeah, he buckled Pransky's knees there after throwing him a steady diet of fastballs, but couldn't get it to snap back over the inside corner. Here comes a 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss as Wheatley... Throws that one by him at 90 miles an hour. Well, and a lot of times, too, you know, it had been fastball, 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 and Pransky done a good job kind of timing him up and, you know, at least making contact. It kind of breaks his rhythm with the curveball and maybe gets him on his heels a little bit, and then he's able to get the fastball by him. Good start to the third for Wheatley. Here's Sandoval, right-handed hitter. He's choked up on the bat with an open stance. The shortstop for the Dewhawks swings at the first pitch, sends it into shallow right. Right fielder coming on is Mosley and couldn't make the play. So it's down. We'll have to see how they score that. They're going to give it a hit. I don't know about that, but Mosley came forward and the ball just hung up there, but actually kind of took a dive and, and didn't get to him. I don't yeah. know if, how do you want to explain that? But. Well, yeah, as, as a fielder, you've got to get to where the ball is. And Chase just kind of... He, he was tracking it. He thought he had it. He thought he had it. He thought he had it. And, you know, that wind's pushing away from him. And all of a sudden, he just never got there. And ball he probably should have caught and, and didn't, didn't get all the way to it. And so Sandoval is on first. And Mitch Gruber stands in. Gruber's got a good batting average, too. He's the second baseman and nine hitter for the Dewhawks. Yeah, Sandoval was a freshman. Now you've got another senior coming up here. I mean, again, a very experienced lineup. Uh, lots and lots of seniors, 50-year seniors here for the for, for the Dewhawks. Wheatley checks on the runner at first. Dorigi has to pick it out of the turf. Yeah, I had the error in the first inning, was able to erase with a double play. We'll see how they respond to a, uh, the first hit of the game for Loris and a ball maybe they could have played. This one misses just high at the letters, 2-0. and oh. Top of the order with McCollum is... On deck. Yeah, we talked a bit. We talked about this on Sunday. You know, when Iowa jumped out to the four to four to nothing lead, you know, finish it. You know, keep going, get outs. Um, Two zero pitch at eye level, three and zero. You know, don't don't give extra bases, don't give extra runners, and and you know, we'll see how Chaz buckles in here and and uh, and gets out of the the mess that he didn't create all of it, but um, at three and zero here, he he might create part of it. Here comes the 3-0. Right down the heart of the plate for a called strike. 3-1 to the 9-hitter, Gruber. A good fastball there and um, willing to give in a little if Gruber was willing to swing at it. But, of course, he wasn't, wasn't at this point in the game. Runner looks like he might want to take off for second. Just a good lead over there. Here's a ground ball to Tello at third. To second for one, on to first. Not quite in time, but they do get the lead runner at second. Tough play there from Tello, and then they have to throw that kind of off the back foot like that to get the lead guy. Yeah, caught him in between hops, and nothing Raider could do there. He had to back up um, to catch it there, and so the off-balance throw, nice job to get the lead runner, but, but really no way they were going to get the runner at first. Flip the order to the top. Here's McCollum, left-handed hitter for Loris. Runner on first is Gruber with two away. Here's a base hit in the right field. Mosley will sprint forward to get this one. Clean, uh, fields it cleanly, gets it into second. So McCollum is on with the second hit of the day for Loris in the top of the third. Runners on first and second with two outs. Iowa leading 4 nothing. 
you know, McCollum hitting 500 on the season. You make mistakes, you make mistakes across the plate, and and he's going to be able to get a hit. Good job there, pulling it into, pulling it into the hole, and and uh, advancing the runner to second. So here's Loris threatening now. Runners on first and second. Here's Church. First pitch is low. low and in. Low, perhaps. <laughs> gotta watch out for Church here. He's got a home run. One of three for Loris this season. Six RBIs. 1-0 pitch way outside. Christensen reaches across his body to stop it. 2-0. and This doesn't feel like a day Loris is going to hit a bunch of home runs. So you're going to have they're going to have to string together hits like this. Maybe get a little help here and there. But, mm -hmm. you know, Chas is going to need to buckle down. Wheatley ready with the 2-0. Here it comes. Breaking ball, missing the zone, low and outside. 3-0. Good job from Church there to hold up. You know, again, the pitch looked good, and, and he recognized uh, recognized the spin and, and laid off of it. Otherwise, he's going to swing right over the top of that one. Short lead at second. 3-0 catches the outside corner. 3-1 and one now. Kind of saw the same pattern when... Wheatley fell behind the other hitter, 3-0. and Came right back with a fastball. See if he's got a way to get the out here. Looking in for a sign from Christensen. Called strike just above the knees. That one down the heart of the plate. Counts now full. Runners will be going on the pitch. Yeah, carousel will start here. Outfielders aren't terribly deep, so still might have a play at the plate if, he, if he's able to put a single out there. 3-2, well outside. Ball four. Bases loaded for Loris in the top of the third. Hawks leading 4 nothing, And that'll bring up Cullen. You know, just one extra base hit on the season, but does have, does have seven RBIs, so one of the team leaders there. We'll get a mound visit from Coach McGrath. In the meantime, he'll head out and talk with Chaz Wheatley. Hey, Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels. Homewood Suites and Home to Suites by Hilton each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. Quick meeting of the minds on the rubber. The pitching, uh, the mound visit has... Concluded, so we'll see Colin up now. Bases loaded for Loris, top of the third inning. Two outs. Wheatley will go out of the windup now. First pitch to Colin. Popped up on the infield. Honar and Derigi come together. Derigi calls him off and catches it for the third out of the inning. So Loris, they load the bases, but Wheatley is able to work out of it and keep the Dewhawks off the scoreboard. Bottom of the third inning coming up, Iowa 4, Loris nothing. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Bottom of the third inning, John Evans, John Leo at Dwayne Banks Field. Iowa 4, Loris nothing. New pitcher for uh, Loris is Matt Jeter. Jeter is uh, making his second appearance. Does have a save on the season through three innings. One hit, walked one, struck out three. Batters are hitting an even 100 against Jeter, right-handed pitcher. 
Sam Peterson will get the first look at him here in the bottom of the third. Out of the windup, first pitch to Sam. Fouled towards the Loris dugout third base side. So Jeter is over the top. He goes out of the windup, but then it comes from right about the ear, just above the ear. Yeah, it's almost as you watch it, it's almost a Luke Llewellyn delivery. Yeah, that's a good comparison right there. One and one is a count now to Peterson. You don't expect it to come from there, so it's just the way the windup is. And all of a sudden, boom, it comes from over top as Peterson drives this one into right. Right fielder going back. Looks like he's got a beat on it just in front of the track, and he'll grab it with two hands first out of the inning. Good uh, good opposite field pop there for Petey, but you know, again, that's probably more right into that wind, so you're not going to get the same carry that you're going to get if you can just get it over onto the left half of the field. You'll get a little bit more, uh, little bit more Mother Nature help. Here's Honar, swings at the first pitch uh, and just misses. Singled in the first for Sam. Comes up with nobody on in the Hawkeye third. Low one outside, breaking ball floating in at 66 miles an hour on the outside. Uh, but too far out there, 1-1 one, one to Honar. Fouls this one to the on-deck circle. Ricochets off the pad, 1-2. Jeter works pretty quickly, doesn't he? Yeah, and, um, you know, it, it, especially as a closer, uh, you know, a guy that gets a save, you come in, you get into a rhythm, go get outs and get done. One, two, foul to the left side this time. Add in the fact that it's 45 degrees and just seal the deal and be yeah. throw strikes and get out of here. We've got the uh, pitch clock, but uh, I don't see that we've got one on display. One, two to Honar, fouled again to the left side. Unless I'm missing it, John. Do you see it? I don't think I don't see it. Yeah, I don't think we've got the uh, I, don't, I don't think we have the technology for the pitch clock yet. But uh, to your point, just a reminder, 20 seconds to throw the pitch. Um, One, two is outside two and two. Good eye there. Yeah. Uh, 20 seconds to throw the pitch. The umpire basically gives a signal. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't really have any trouble with it in any of our games or really weren't any. Um, even close countdowns or, or you know, kind of weird step-off moves. Everybody was, everybody was worked with a, a pretty good sense of urgency and got in the box to go. 3-2, Honar lifts this one foul and out of play to the Loris dugout in the left, uh, bullpen rather, to the left side. Yeah, Sam doing a nice job working the count here. He took two pitches. One was really close, and now he's worked the count full. 3-2, foul back to the Screen, wasn't that bat here from Honar? Pretty impressed with the fan there that was walking across and didn't <laughs> even flinch as the foul ball comes right at him. This net's got a little bit of give, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, he he, he was in good eye there from Sam to take ball four. Yeah, good good uh, good job from the fan to, to I mean, didn't even didn't even really think about it. But the net kind of gave to, yeah. to a couple inches, pretty good. Here's Chase Mosley, fly out to right. In the first, John, pretty good crowd here today uh, considering the, the weather and coming out to see the Hawkeyes for the first time in 2023. Iowa leading 4 nothing as Mosley pops this one up in front of the Iowa dugout. First base side, first baseman is there to make the catch in foul territory, and Mosley is retired. Chase has just had a... You know, came in with uh, with a lot of expectation and just had a, just having a hard time getting going. But he, you can you can just kind of see the way he carries himself. He's going to be a good hitter by the time uh, by the time uh, April and May roll around. Unreal video game like stats at uh, Kirkwood, so you know he's got it in him. Here's Braden Frazier lines this one into left and dropped. It's dropped by the left fielder, and so Frazier's on with two outs. Hit it almost right to him, the, the left fielder, uh, Rogers. He squatted down, bent his knees, and hit right in the glove. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, I mean, for a, for a ball kind of right at you, that's still a tough play. It's, sure. it's kind of a sinking liner. Um, it, it's it's kind of coming that direction. Should he have made the catch? Well, sure, but but it wasn't quite as, as easy as you think with, with just the right at him, a little top spin, top spin lob there diving right at you. Get a look at Christensen again. Batter from the left side. He walked his first time up. He ended up scoring. He saw four pitches. All of them were out of the zone. Yeah. One ball and no strikes to him this time. 
And four pitch walk. They're afraid to go at him. There we go. Yeah, swings and misses at that one. Good to see the Hawkeye catcher give that one a rip. First and second with two outs. Iowa leading 4 0 in the bottom of the third. One ball and one strike. Jeter's ready for the next pitch to Christensen. Ah, called strike. Low and in, one and two. See if he can get his first career Hawkeye hit here. Left fielder playing a little bit close to the line over there. One two pitch to Christensen is in the turf low. Two and two. We've lost our game cast feed again. I was looking for something mm -hmm. on Gary when we lost it. 2-2. Two, two. Fouled back to the screen. Staying alive. Gotta see if the Hawkeyes can keep the keep the string alive. Scored in the first two innings. See if they can muster up a run here with the runner out there in scoring position. 2-2 two, two on its way home. Foul again to the left side. Well, we talk about it quite a bit, John, uh, winning every inning, right? Yeah. Uh, at least not not losing them. So if you do that, it'll be my turn to be captain obvious today. But <laughs> if you do that a majority of the time, you're going you're gonna to win. Iowa four, Loris nothing in the bottom of the third. 2-2 two -two to Christensen on the ground of the shortstop. He's got to charge it hard. He'll scoop it up, throw it over to first. Got him. Ooh. Close play. They called him out at first. Very close. Christensen gets down the line pretty good for being a catcher. He's got pretty good legs, but not fast en enough right there. Yeah, um, my guess is you might see the headset if we'd have still been in Texas, but uh, punched out, so we'll go to the top of the fourth inning. Iowa four, Loris nothing. Back right after this, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Iowa four, Loris nothing in the top of the fourth inning. New pitcher in for the Hawkeyes. We'll get to him in just a moment, but let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. ID break. Pausing 10 seconds for station ID. This is Iowa Hawkeye baseball. All right, new Hawkeye pitcher in the fourth inning will be freshman Cade Obermuller. Long awaited for as long as he's been here. Uh, long awaited debut of Obermuller, left handed pitcher, 5'11 uh, from City High here in Iowa City. Tabbed as the number one left handed pitcher in Iowa by perfect game. Last year in, in high school was 7 and 1 with a 1.11 ERA. His senior year let's get a good look at Obermuller here yeah you talk about uh, uh, you know you, you talk about stuff and you know he was he was probably a top 10 round draft pick at least and just had kind of made it clear that he wanted to come to come to Iowa and whew, good slider there and grow up a little bit um, but the way coach McGrath described his stuff is is he's electric and so um, still has some some work to do to to become the full pitcher, but but yeah, he's got crazy good stuff that Hawk fans are gonna love. Starts up and ahead, 0-1 on the Loris hitter. This is lined past Tello for a base hit. As Rogers is on, went opposite field there. Yeah, good job to stay with that. You know that was a good breaking ball that he really kept the shoulder in and stayed with it, and 
and uh, was able to drive it out the opposite way. Tello maybe didn't quite read it, got a, got a little bit of a delayed jump on it, and the ball got out into left field. Here's De Benedetto now, batting from the right side. Obermuller is set, first pitch on its way home. Fouled back to the screen, causing the fans to flinch over there to the right. Obermuller, uh, left-handed pitcher, and when he's out of the stretch, really closed off. He's angled almost towards uh, the Iowa dugout when he closes things off. And he brings home the 0-1. Uh, Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Got him on a 92-mile-an-hour fastball. 0-2 now. Yeah, you get him up into uh, you get him up into the to warmer conditions. Maybe has thrown a little bit more. You'll start to see 93, 94. Um, he, he can he can get it up there. It moves. No balls and two strikes to the Loris right fielder. Started his swing, but was able to stop it. One and two. And you got Gable Mitchell out playing short. And you got Cade pitching. This is uh, this is an e this this part of an East Side game now. <laughs> the good old days, right? Exactly. The good Think old back days to the of the high school of, times. Of four or five months ago. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> One ball and two strikes. Obermuller set. Here it comes. High chopper on the ground to second. Honar has to wait for it. So his only play is over there to first to retire to Benedetto for the first out of the inning. Yeah, no, no option there from Honar. There wasn't even really a, hey, let's charge it and see what happens. Um, it was just stay out of the runner's way, let it come through the baseline, and, and get your out. Sam did a nice job to execute that. Runner on second is Rogers. Here's Wohlers now with an open stance. See what Obermuller has for him. Wohlers struck out to end the second. Swings and misses the first pitch he sees from Cade, and it's 0-1. And we talked about Wollers is he's a good hitter and, and been around the program a long time. So um, Kate will have to do a good job here to, to get him out and not let him drive in a run. Just off the plate outside with the 0-1. Yeah, his fastball right now is sitting right there in the low 90s, 91, 92. Um, his location's good. So, I mean, kind of everything you want to see from a debut so far. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. Nice breaking ball, and he fouled it off in the zone. He didn't really try to swing at that. It was more of a half swing, and it must have caught either the bottom part of the bat or maybe even the handle. We were blocked from view there. Yeah, I think he I mean, just, just fooled him there, and yeah. the ball broke across and, and just ended up a check swing, check swing foul right at the plate. Nasty slider. Here comes the 1-2 from Obermuller. Swing and a miss as Wohlers is down. Yeah, there he, you know, he went full gas again, got that one up 93 miles an hour, so it was fastest pitch of the game there. And, and you know, belt high and away, boy, those are, those are hard to hit. Kate is popping the mitt. It's February afternoon, two away in the Loris fourth, Iowa leading 4 nothing. Starts off the at-bat to Pransky with a nice slider that missed just in. Again, we talked about speed variation. You know that was uh, that's a 78, 79 mile an hour curveball. So you go from you go from 93 mile an hour fastball, you drop 15 miles an hour for that curveball. Forget it, right? This pitch gets by Christensen, all the way to the backstop. Runner will advance from second to third. I was just thinking about Obermuller that. When he has missed so far, which hasn't been very often, it's been right around the plate. It's been good plate discipline by Loris to not go after those ones, with the exception of that last pitch there from Cade. And that one he didn't miss by that far, but he missed his spot by a long ways. Christensen was ready more on the outside. He pulled it across all the way to the inside part of the plate. 2-0 pitch, swing and a miss. And so, again, then when you... We talk about the hitter's timing being off. Well, you throw the 92-mile-an-hour fastball and you miss your spot. Well, you can cross your catcher up, too, where he can't get there in time and wasn't able to keep it in front of him and, and avoid it going to the backstop. Yeah, that's a good point right there. Two balls, one strike with two outs in the fourth. Next pitch on its way. Hit on the ground and foul past Tello. Third base coach has got to make a better play than that. Yeah, I have a feeling that... Uh, 
the dugout nearest him will uh, <laughs> chirp him a little bit there. Two balls, two strikes, and two outs in the Loris fourth. Iowa leading 4 nothing. Runner at third. The Duhawks threatening, but Obermuller in a good spot here. Two balls and two strikes. Here it comes. Fouled sharply out of play to the right side. Heads up over there. I was, I was choosing my parking spot pregame. That was one of the things I was thinking about as I was rolling into that lot over there. Yeah. <laughs> Got to watch it. Think about the parking that's over in foul territory over to the left field side, over there to the right. Got to think about that when you come to home games at Dwayne Banks. Here comes a 2-2 from Obermuller. There it is, called third strike. Backdoor breaking ball, and it got him. He's not going to see many of those in the a ARC. <laughs> I'm afraid not. Good job by Obermuller. Comes in, strikes out two Dewhawks to end the threat in the top of the fourth. We head to the bottom half of the inning. Iowa four, Loris nothing. Back right after this, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Weiner, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. John Evans, John Leo at Dwayne Banks Field. Bottom of the fourth inning, Iowa four. Loris, nothing as we're getting towards the, the middle innings of this one. Loris will throw out another uh, pitcher, a new pitcher. They'll go with Danny Heimer, making his third appearance of the season. Hey, when he comes in, the Duhawks do pretty well. He's 2-0 and oh in the early season. Four and two-thirds innings pitched. He's struck out three. He's walked one. And uh, through four and two-thirds, he hasn't given up a hit yet. And I can maybe see why. He's a lefty pitcher, and he's, he's sidearm. He's not submarine all the way down, but he, he's sidearm. Yeah, and again, it, at, uh, at the D3 level, with, when you have something a little funky and, and with good action, he's going to be tough to hit. Top of the order, Gable Mitchell watches the first pitch be called a strike at the knees. That one came in there at 79. And uh, intimidation factor a little bit from uh, Heimer. It's the 0-1. Gable lays off this one, bounces on the plate. As Heimer stands in there, and he holds a glove right in front of his face where you probably only see his eyes peeking out. Well, and interesting, he starts kind of on the first base side, but when he actually pitches, he's clear over on the third base side. On the ground is short, picked up on a couple of hops, thrown over in time to retire the hustling Mitchell down the line. Gable's out number one. Yeah, that was a good observation by you right there, John, because he, he does start, you know, center and first base side, and then by the time he throws it, he's over here on the left side, so maybe that creates more, almost more room, more space for him to reach out there with that sidearm. Yeah, and I suppose, you know, probably gets him back closer to the play. He could create some serious angles on a left-hander. Here's Tello. On a hopper over to third, first pitch swinging, hustling down the line, and he beat it. A couple of hops on the throw from the Loris third baseman. Wohlers, that was a tough play, but Tello beats it out. Well, you know, the last the last inning we had that high chopper to Honar at second base. Um, you know, you're at second base, it's a, it's a, it's a short throw. You know, but, uh, Wohlers had to back up there on the high hopper. You know, he gets all the way basically to the outfield cut and has to delay it and then make a hard throw, and they just didn't have a chance. Here's Anthony getting a look at Heimer. First pitch is a call and strike on the inside corner. One away for Iowa in the bottom of the fourth inning, leading 4 0 over Loris. Heimer set with the 0 1. Here it comes. Inside, almost hit Keaton. It's 1 and 1. 
you know, Keaton had uh, against Kansas State had those couple pop-ups. You could tell he was frustrated and his at-bats weren't going the way he wanted and then had a couple doubles in the home run to, to wrap up his uh, Texas swing. Check on Raider over at first. Yeah, because of the effort, Keaton was honored as the Big Ten Player of the Week. He hit 429 down in Texas with six hits, five runs scored. And through three and a third. You're right. One one pitch fouled to the left side. And he struck out three in those three and a third innings. Yeah, I had checked the website down for the Carabao Classic and I didn't see the all tournament team. I have to think that Keaton will will make it when they announce it, but yeah. I just didn't see them put it out yet. One two to Anthony. Fouled again to the left side. Stay at one and two. I saw a couple of things, but I, I didn't see a, a team, but I saw uh, Cruz, he he was the MVP of the tournament from LSU. He had a really nice day against Sam Houston. Yeah. I think it was five for six, maybe. Yeah, he had a crazy good yeah. Sunday to kind of blow it out there. They scored too many runs to beat Sam Houston. Took took a, the uh, belt away from us. One two pitch to Anthony, just inside two and two. Yeah, it was uh, as we were sitting on the plane getting ready to come home. It was. Uh, we needed a two-run home run there in the bottom of the ninth from, from Sam Houston to, to have him FedEx the championship belt up here to Iowa City. Tello takes off for second. Anthony swings and misses. Throw down to second is well off the mark. So Tello has a stolen base, but Anthony is struck out, so he'll go back to the dugout with two away now in the Hawkeye four. Yeah, that was uh, went chasing a little bit of a pitch there. Leave it to Kyle to get me the good information. Brendan, Dur Brendan Durigi, Keaton Anthony, and Zach Volker made the all-tournament team. I think I voted for all three of them. I, I was just going to say that. I think I got them two. First pitch to Durigi, low and outside, ball one. Thank you, uh, Kyle, for the info there. The quick on his feet. Uh, Zach was Zach was clutch in the Sunday win, obviously throwing five and a third innings to get the K-State win. and. Brennan at the plate now was was pretty good all you know especially Saturday and Sunday but but especially Saturday and Keaton did a little bit of everything all weekend with the pitching and the hitting. One ball and a strike to Dorigi, two away in the Hawkeye fourth. Iowa leading four nothing. Tello's at second. Next pitch is outside away from Dorigi. He lays off two and one. This is a good type of pitcher for Dorigi to face. You know, uh, again, a little bit of an unusual delivery, but lefty on lefty. So he's really got to hang in there, see if he can drive a ball. Even if he drives one to left field, see if he can keep his shoulders in and, and hit one hard. All eyes on this one. Called strike. Two and two. Been pretty impressed with, with Heimer for Loris uh, in his outing so far. The delivery itself is strange. And he's got just good movement, and variety, and speeds. 2-2 two -two to Dorigi. Right back to him. It bounces off his hip. Heimer's got it. Overhand it to first to end the threat. Yeah, you can see why he hasn't given up a hit now until the until the Tello single yeah. there. Yeah, good job. And, and even the single from Tello was, you know, on the infield, yeah, right? Yeah, on the infield so. single, so good job there. All right, we've played four at Dwayne Banks Field. Head to the fifth, Iowa four, Loris nothing. Back right after this, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo, got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Hey, everyone. I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and hy V stores where right now kids can eat free.
New pitcher in for the Hawkeyes with Iowa leading Loris 4-0 in the top of the fifth inning. It's time to see Jack Young, junior right-handed pitcher, 5'10", 185 from LeClaire, Iowa. Homegrown Hawkeye. Spent some time at Parkland College where he was 2-1, and, and he struck out 31 batters. So uh, good job for Young in his first couple of years of his college career. He comes in. And, uh, looking forward to see what Jack's got for the Hawkeyes uh, coming into the game in the fifth inning. Yeah, and you see that a little bit. You know, uh, uh, Hawkeyes, homegrown, homegrown Iowa kids kind of go find their way. Um, and, you, and you really see uh, the junior college route and some of the coaches I talked to down in Texas. You know, it's one of the things with summer ball is some of the Iowa kids end up flying under the radar. And so they end up at, at a junior college and then because all the scholarship money's already been allocated. But then next thing you know, they really they really develop and blossom where they land and, and they become good contributors at, at D1 programs. Leading off the inning is Sandoval. First pitch from Young is outside, ball one. And Jackson, one of those guys, good stuff. It's tapped foul in the box. Fastball will be up in the upper 80s. You know, might get might get her into the low 90s, and then uh, you know the, the good spinning, breaking stuff. You know, kind of going to come in that, uh, you know, almost in the high 70s range. So, you know, again, you know, getting good disparity between the speeds. 1-1 one, one just outside, 2-1. and one. Going back to your point on the sort of like the junior college route or, or uh, Iowa being in the summer uh, when it comes to, to high school. As uh, the 2-1 from Young on the ground is short. Mitchell's ready for it. He's got it. Throws it over hard to first. DeRiggy picked it, got it, out number one. Uh, you just think about maybe that, that sort of benefits Iowa in the long run uh, in some way where it, it doesn't really seem like an advantage. Yeah, it's some, you know, some of those kids maybe uh, uh, maybe don't get noticed right away, so they stay a little bit closer to home. Maybe they've always wanted to be a Hawkeye, and then um, you know maybe it takes them a year longer than they expected, but uh, in a lot of cases that will work out just fine. Gruber squares to bunt, hits it foul to the left side. Because there are plenty of you know advantages and disadvantages of having uh, high school ball in the in the summer, right? And and that's one of the maybe advantages if you give it time to, to go find yourself at at a, at a different school and then be able to come back. Yeah, probably the biggest disadvantage for for summer baseball for Iowa kids, and I shouldn't say biggest because there's probably a couple, but you know you you'll lose some kids that maybe have you know seniors that have already moved on that that would maybe stay for a sport. Um, if it were in season, but then when you put it in the summer, they've already kind of checked out and they've moved on to their college plans. Maybe they're going to play another sport in college, uh, so they don't want to. They, you know, they need their workouts, and so they don't want to spend two months playing baseball in the in the summer. Counts one and two to Gruber, who lines one softly into the Iowa dugout. Hope everybody was paying attention yeah. over there. Young looking for a strikeout here. The one-two, up and in, two and two. Of a dramatic flinch there. I like it. <laughs> well, it wasn't that close, but he wanted to make sure the umpire knew it was inside. Two balls and two strikes to the nine hitter for Loris. Tap softly. Mitchell's got to charge it hard. Gloves it with one. Throw is way high over Dorigi's head. That's a base hit. Yeah. He had no chance of throwing him out anyway. Might, it probably better off to put that one in your pocket anyhow. Yeah, we'll see how they score it. I believe they gave it a hit already. Because you're right, John. Uh, Gruber was down the line. That was hit so softly. And even on the turf, which maybe is a little quicker, it's got a little zip to it on the turf. That wasn't, that wasn't hit hard enough for Gable to have much of a play on it at all. They do score it as a hit. So Gruber's on with the single. Top of the fifth inning, Iowa 4 nothing. Top of the order now for McCollum. He squares to bunt, pops it up. Raiders coming on, but he can't make a play on it as it's foul. Good start for Young. That hangs up an extra half second. Tello probably goes full extension for it. Yeah, he'd, ha he'd have had a chance to make a play there. and Yeah, you, know, you kind of expect your leadoff hitter to be a pretty decent bunter. And, you know, the game's... 
We still have a baseball game here, so you know, you, you move him up, you know, you, you know, maybe a bunt for kind of a hit, but at least move a runner into scoring position. Uh, Takes the next pitch on the outside corner. Nice toss there from Young, called strike at 89 miles an hour. You know, the top of this, the top of this Loris orders uh, around 500 for the season, so they yeah, can be able, they can put, they can put bat on ball. 0-2 gets by Christensen. It was inside. Christensen can't find it. It's at the pad. Runner advances to uh, second and then rounded it hard. Almost went to third, but he'll stay put there. Took a long time for Christensen to find it. He had a probably had a, a better than average chance of going ahead and getting to third, but you know you're not really expecting that when you round it either. So um, you slow down. You kind of come and check, and then by the time you're able to turn the speed back on again it might have been a little too late jack looks down at his wrist for the sign he's got it one ball two strikes young feels it and deals it way inside christensen backhands it it's two and two yeah you know we talked about this a little bit when when Chaz had his inning you know you right now you just you can't worry about the runner you've just got to buckle in here and and Focus on throwing a strike here and getting the top of the order out. 2-2 two -two to McCollum. Line drive and base hit in the left. They're going to wave home the runner. Here comes the throw. Tello cuts it off, throws it home. It's low. And Loris is on the board. As McCollum hits a RBI double. Maybe a single and an advancement on the throw, but either way, he's standing on second, and he drives in Gruber. A yeah, really good piece of hitting there as he stuck with it on the outside on the outside half and made good contact, drove it out into left, and you know, a couple hits for him now. And the Duhawks are on the board in the fifth inning, 4-1. to one. So McCollum trades places with Gruber. Here's... Church watching the first pitch miss high and away from him. It's one and oh. Again, the top of their order has been good. Yeah. Just one out in the inning. This is hit foul into the Loris dugout. Heads up over there. One and one. You know, Church on the year came came into the game as the leading hitter at, at 583 and um a lot of singles, one home run, but it's driven in six so far. One one hit on the ground again, foul to the left side. A lot of foul balls while Young's been in there, so they're having they're they're aggressive in their approach, but they're having trouble timing them up, with the exception of the hit from McCollum there. One ball, two strikes. Young looks in. Here's the pitch. High ball two. I yeah, tried to put a little something extra on that one. You got you got up into the 91, but but lost control high and and out of the zone. Decent lead at second for McCollum, shallow in the outfield, 2-2 on its way home. Tapped foul off the end of the bat to the right side. We'll do it again. Long at bats in this inning. Yeah, I mean even even the out, you know, it's still been uh, been good work on on the Duhawk hitter, hitter's part to kind of stick with it. They must, they're must they seeing it out of his hand well. Here comes the 2-2. On the ground to second. Honar is ready for it. Vacuums it in, throws it over to Dorigi for the second out of the inning. Runner advances to third on the backside. That's McCollum. His church is put out 4-3. to three. Let's see if, see if Jack can clean up his mess here and finish it up. Three hitter Cullen. It's 0 for 2 this afternoon. The runner on third and two outs in the Loris fifth. Iowa leading 4 1. First pitch called strike. Probably won't go any further up or out. Yeah, either one. <laughs> right on the corner. No balls and a strike to the senior first baseman for the Duhawks. Here's the pitch from Young. Swing and a miss. Had him fooled on an 80 mile an hour pitch right there. 0 and 2. Yeah, good bounce back now. Now. Now you've got to finish it. You know, it's got to be a good pitch because obviously with the runner on third, but you just got to get your last out here. Here's the 0-2. Just high, right at maybe a bit below the letters, but one and two. If you're a batter right there, how do you lay off that one? Must have really known that it was going to be a called ball. Yeah, tested that belt yeah. high theory. Here comes a 1-2. 
line drive right to Honar at second. He gloves it for the third out of the inning. Good contact there from Cohen, but right to Sam at second. And that'll end the top of the fifth. The Duhawks get one. Iowa leading four to one. We'll see how the Hawkeyes respond in the bottom of the fifth. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from their field. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular and the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel, the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Jill Armstrong and her team strive to make every buyer and seller at ease with the real estate process. Contact the Jill Armstrong team, Wiscogman Realty, for all of your real estate needs. Call 319-631-5455. Bottom of the fifth inning, Iowa four, Loris one. New pitcher into the game for the Duhawks is John Cornelius, making his second appearance of the season. He's got a 27 flat ERA, just two thirds of an innings uh, in his first appearance. Three hits, two earned, walked one. He did strike out two. Opposing batters are hitting an even 600 against him. So just based on that stat line, maybe a chance for Iowa to get back into the scoring column. We scored three in the first, just one in the second. Yeah, hit, uh, Cornelius here has got a couple of wild pitches and a walk too. So um, did strike out both hitters to get his outs, but Hawks will need to need to get back here, try to, you know, need to score at least one to make sure they don't lose the inning like we've been talking about. Yeah, Peterson is the first batter in the inning. Foul ball straight towards us and foul over our heads. Still disappointed we didn't catch a foul ball in Texas. Oh, Thought we, we had a chance. We were close, especially that first day, right? Yeah, we, they peppered us the yeah. first day. Peterson down on the count 0-1 to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Hawks are up 4-1. Next one missing above the hands, one and one. You would like to think that in a bullpen game where you're basically pitching an inning, Iowa's nine pitchers would be would be able to outduel Loris's nine pitchers. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Uh, Peterson squared to bunt there, and he missed it, didn't pull it back. The, the pitch was low and outside, so now he's down on the count one and two. Yeah. Iowa's bullpen has really been a strength as it is. Uh, so now you kind of see the depth of that bullpen, too, that we've been excited to see this afternoon. 1-2 pitch to Peterson. Called strike on the outside corner. Petey goes down to start the fifth. I think he was trying a couple things in that at bat with the bun for a hit. Uh, I don't know how, how many times we'll see Sam do that throughout the course of the year. but Petey's not afraid to put one down again. He's got really good speed. The, the choice there wasn't very good as, as the ball was was well out of the strike zone. And so even if he gets that one down, I don't know how he's going to get it in play. Honar stands in, drives this one to left. In the gap, a diving play. Yes, he caught it. Just got to tip your cap there. A diving play in the gap in left by Rodgers. That, mm. that more than makes up for the little slider that bounced out of his glove before. Great play there by, by Rodgers. We've seen uh, quite a few defensive plays, defensive highlights uh, this season. Iowa's had plenty. We've seen a few at uh, the opposing side as well. That was certainly one there. Here's Chase Mosley. First pitch skips in front of the plate and outside as well, 1-0. Well, Braden Frazier was number eight on SportsCenter that uh, uh, Friday night in the Iowa loss. Anytime you can get into that, swing and a miss by Mosley. Anytime you can get to the top ten on SportsCenter, uh, great play, especially during this time of year when you've got so many sports going on. A little bit more speed here from Cornelius. That was an 86-mile-an-hour fastball. Mosley lays off this one. Ooh, called strike. 
high and away. It's one and two. And that was 87. Yeah. So he, that also helps explain why maybe he struck out a couple guys. He's got some good zip. Sure. Cornelius is ready with the one, two. It's on its way to Mosley. This one's well outside. Chase does a good job to lay off that. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Bottom of the fifth inning, Iowa, four to one. Got a good live arm here. Had a, had a good breaking ball there earlier. So we'll see. Uh, We'll see if this is the Chase's liking. Comes the next pitch outside. Breaking ball, 80 miles an hour. Full count now. Hawkeye right fielder, 0 for 2 today. No Chase has the potential. Three balls and two strikes. Here it comes. Way outside, gets by the catcher. Mosley's on. It's a live ball, so Chase will round first. The catcher didn't really go after it. Uh, but Chase will stay there at first. He draws the two-out walk. Yeah, kind of as a catcher with, with nobody on, you just get you get accustomed to turning around and asking for a ball from the umpire. Well, he turned around and asked for the ball for the umpire, and the umpire said, uh, It's right there. Yeah, we're, we're going. You go chase that. Son. Live ball. Here's Frazier. Also 0 for 2, but he reached on an error his last time up. First pitch to him is... Off the plate outside, ball one. I'd like to see Iowa get a couple more runs here. They started strong, but have faded a bit. We get into the middle innings. Leading Loris four to one in the bottom of the fifth. Runner on first is Mosley. They'll check on him, and they picked him off. <laughs> Mosley was leaning to the right like he was about to take off, and they pick him off at first. He is the third out of the inning. Coach Heller is hot. Oh, it was a, see the replay of that of the Bach move. He, boy, Coach Heller and Marty, Coach Sutherland, Mitch Bell, everybody's angry that he was. He, he, balked, he, huh, you yeah, think? Yeah, he, he completely balked, but uh, nobody that matters is making that call. Well, Coach Heller is going to have a conversation with the first base umpire, Keith Munt. And that'll do it for the fifth inning. Head to the sixth, Iowa four, Loris one. We're back right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At Oak Knoll, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oaknall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, uh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Top of the sixth inning, Iowa leading Loris 4-1. to one. New Hawkeye pitcher is Drew Proskovic. Freshman lefty, 6'2", 180. Played his high school baseball at Cedar Rapids Xavier. Third team All-State his senior year. Another tall pitcher for the Hawks. And he'll deal it from the left side here in the sixth inning. Excited to see what Drew's got. Yeah, you just kind of see as he goes through the warm-up pitches. You, know, you can probably see... You'll probably see mid to upper 80s. You're going to see a good curveball in the in the mid 70s there, and kind of just a, another good mix of pitches. Well, the game is uh, sort of stalling out a little bit at, for Iowa. At least they scored three in the first, one in the second. Have been held scoreless since then. Loris pushed across a run in the top of the fifth to make it four to one. So, uh, do Hawks feel like they're still in this game? I'm not sure that's a feel like they're still in this game. They, true. they are still yeah. in this game. Rodgers will lead off the bottom of the sixth for Loris. First pitch is outside. Rodgers a 
Left-handed hitter. He made a nice play in the field the last inning. Check swing. He went around one and one. That pitch was nasty from Proskovic. Yeah, 72 mile an hour bender and and is really crowding the inside part of the plate. Toes are right on the inside batter's box line. Pitch floats high, two and one. Yeah, he is that that front foot. He's got a closed stance, uh, and that front foot is on the line. Boy, if he steps out of that at all, he's going to be out. 2-1 pitch from Proskovic. Check swing did not go, and it was low and outside, 3-1. and one. And it's a little unsettling. You know, lefty on lefty here to have him, have him set so close to the plate, and you're trying to break that ball in. And the hitter's not really going to get out of the way. 3-1. Look Ooh. out into the Loris dugout. Sharp liner. Everybody all right over there. Full count to Rogers now. And Drew's kind of staying with the off-speed stuff here. See if he tries to sneak one by or if he sticks with the off-speed stuff to the left-hander. Let's see the 3-2 popped up on the infield. Tello calls everybody off in front of the bag over there at third. He's got it for out number one. Good job by Proskovic to battle back and get that out. Yeah, 100%. To come back and get uh, to get the out there after falling behind. And, um, you know, and a good at-bat, you know, just kind of, again, stay in there. You know, the left-hander facing uh, a very tough left-hander, but uh, Drew won the battle. First pitch is lined in the right field. Mosley's got it. Out number two. De Benedetto is retired. You're getting better with that name, too. I got it's it down. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> They'll probably put him on the bench now that you've got it, but you've, you've been much, uh, much smoother with it as we've gone along here. <laughs> Takes a little bit of focus. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the sixth inning. Iowa four to one with two away. Here's Wallers. First pitch is a called strike. Nice floater there from Proskovic. Yeah, that was down 74 miles an hour. So he's really, really actually varying speeds on his breaking balls, too. Check swing. Yes, home plate umpire will say that he went around. That one was in on the shins. And Wallers couldn't hold up. Now he chokes up on the bat. Protect that outside corner. Proskovec looks to strike him out. The 0-2 called third strike. He got him. Yeah, good back foot curve ball and then came right back with a fastball. <laughs> and Christensen threw it, down to, threw it down the right field line on the throw around to flip it to the mound. So not the most stellar ending, but the strikeout was good. Just working some things out. All right, good one, two, three inning from Proskovec. He puts a cherry on top. With a strikeout to end the top of the sixth inning. All right, let's get these Hawkeye bats going in the bottom of the sixth. The Iowa four, Loris one. We're back right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at UIHC.org. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team with Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor. And Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. Handling all of your exterior needs from roofing, siding, windows, and gutters, they've got you covered. Providing free damage inspections and help filing insurance claims. Call 319-343-6376. Bottom of the sixth inning, Iowa leading Loris 4-1. to one. The Hawkeyes will send 8-9-1 to the box in this inning. At the game or at home, Wimmer's premium quality hot dogs and sausages will score with family and friends. Take the highest quality beef and pork and you will get the best tasting hot dog. Wimmer's, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. All right, Braden Frazier leads off the inning, fouls it back to the screen. Frazier was up in the box in the fifth when Chase Mosley got Alleged, picked off. Allegedly. Yeah, over there at first. 0-1 to Frazier, just low, 1-1. One and one. Again, the only person that matters called him out. Yep. I think uh, 
Hawks were looking for a balk in that situation. 1-1. One, one. Floats low. 2-1. and one. Frazier with a good eye in this at bat. Let's see if we can get Frazier back going. He had a, a pretty good opening weekend. Drives this one in the air. Left center. Center fielder moving over, and he'll look up into the Iowa City sky and make the catch for the first out of the inning. Frazier retired. Yeah, it's just not... Uh... You're going to have to drive it tonight. It's not a it's not a night where the ball is going to carry for you. If you want to you want to get it there, you're going to have to you're going to have to provide most of the energy. Yeah. Here's Gary Christensen. First pitch is just outside ball one. Iowa leading four to one. Base is empty for Christensen. Slices this off the end of the bat. Foul to the left side. It's one and one. Yeah, the PA guy confused me there. <laughs> like, that is not Will. If Will Christofferson's in there to bat, that'd be, that'd be something. That might be. That's a cockier move than you usually <laughs> see from Coach Heller. <laughs> Counts two and one for Christensen. Eric in his Hawkeye debut, he walked and scored in the second, grounded out to second in the third. He's up in the count here, three and one. Looking to get a Hawkeye base runner in the bottom of the six before we flip it to the top where Michael Seegers is in the on-deck circle. 3-1, called strike inside corner. Counts now full to the Hawkeye catcher. All right, Garrick, sit on the spot you like and drive one somewhere. Pitcher is set. Low and in, ball four. So Christensen is on first. He sprints down there. Here's Michael Seegers entering the game in the sixth inning. The pitcher for Loris right now is T.J. Boyd. Third appearance of the season for him, a 4-5 ERA. He's thrown four innings, four hits, two runs, both of which were earned. Struck out four. Opponents are hitting 286 against him. So we'll see Seegers now in the sixth. Runner on first. See if the Hawks break out the short game here with the lead down to three. Yeah. First pitch to Michael is a called strike. High, but in the zone. 0-1. And, and again, with a guy like Michael, when you trust him with the bat, 0-1 isn't really scary. You could still see a hit and run. You could still see him lay down a sack bunt here as well. Boyd is set, the pitch, another called strike on the outside corner, 0-2. Got to be tough for players, you know, they come in in the middle of the game, you, you don't have a lot of time to to adjust, you're just right in there, and, and Seegers has some work to do, 0-2. In this case, they've got a plan for the most part, and we'll, get, we'll kind of finish it up here after the pitch. Michael takes that one high, one and two. So for the most part, they have a plan of okay, hey, we wanted to, let's get let's get Gable six innings out in the field, and and so, you know, as a turn, you're five six innings, and then when the at bat comes, and so Michael's probably had, you know, 10, 15 minutes of notice of hey, you're going to go in the next at bat, so he's been able to go get loose and warm up. Sure. Um, so he's had a little bit of an opportunity here to um, to not just come and and say, okay, hey, let's see how tight and clenched up your muscles are. Now go swing a bat for us and see how that works out. Yeah. One ball, two strikes, one out. Runner on first for Iowa in the bottom of the six. Leading Loris four to one. Michael fouls this breaking ball off and out of play to the right. Not a good guy to have pinch hit when you're starting shortstop. Yeah. It's able to come in in the bottom of the sixth inning for you and pinch hit. Battling here with two strikes. Raider Tello is on deck for the Hawks. I'll check on the runner at first. Christensen back in there safely. Been really impressed with the Loris pitchers as a whole. You know, they keep rolling guys in. They throw strikes. They've, they've attacked the Hawkeye hitters. Uh, for the most part, they've missed the barrels of the bat and, and gotten outs. Seegers on the ground, a third, but just foul past the bag. Yeah, that's that's sort of the, the what, what you'd expect would be that the depth would be an issue, right? Where you have okay, we got a few, we have two good starting pitchers, and then just a couple arms out of the bullpen. But now Loris has done a really nice job coming in, uh, 
sort of reloading inning after inning. Bottom of the sixth, Hawks are up three, trying to add to it with Christensen at first. One-two pitch is on its way home to Seegers. Hit softly behind the mound, funky roll. Second baseman picks it up, throws it to first, and they got him at first. Didn't get the tag on Christensen, who sprinted by the second baseman. But uh, two down for the Hawks in the six. Boy, that had a lot of spin on it. Yeah, serious English there as he kind of cued it out there. But i tell you what, great play there by the second baseman. A strong fastball there after he missed the tag because if he doesn't come if he doesn't come and really get that over there quick, Seegers is going to beat that out all day, every day. Two outs, runner on second. Iowa up three. The bottom of the sixth from Dwayne Banks. First pitch to Tello. Breaking ball outside, ball one. Iowa's been able to put that runner out at second base here for a while, but hasn't been able to kind of finish it off and drive him in. Need some timely hitting. Tello is two for three today with a couple of singles. Boyd ready with the 1-0. Here it comes. Rip to third and by the third baseman. They're going to keep Christensen at third base. It looked for a moment like it was getting by the third baseman, Wollers, but it really just deflected off to his right. So we'll have to see how they Quick error. score that. Really, error, okay? They gave it an error. You don't have to move your feet. It's right to you. I mean, hard hit, but... Yeah, hard hit, but but there was no uh, uh, there was no movement. That's, uh, that's probably going to be an error 99 times out of 100, even in the home ballpark. All right, here's Keaton Anthony, a chance to do some... Damage, two for three today with a home run. Runners on first and third, and the Hawkeyes sixth, two away. First pitch to Keaton, right down the middle, called strike. We talked about that a little bit this weekend. Keaton is Keaton is patient, you know, like Michael Seegers. You're not afraid to not afraid to be down in the count and, and still be able to have a good approach to, to hit. Anthony waits the pitch. Downstairs, ball one. Wouldn't expect Coach Heller's flashing some signs. You wouldn't really expect Tello to be moving in this spot. Um, you kind of want to let Anthony swing and have that right. hole over there. Uppercut swing on this one. Fouls it to the left side, one and two. Now with two strikes, you might change your approach just a touch, figuring they're going to throw a strike that, uh, uh, or maybe waste a pitch and just basically kind of give Tello the base. Here comes the one-two, breaking ball just high. Started high, almost dropped in there. I'm almost surprised Keaton maybe didn't swing at that one. It was elevated enough where if he wants to chase a pitch like that and can barrel it up, it'd go a long way. Yeah, I think the breaking ball part of it uh, yeah. allowed him to hold off. I think if that's a fastball, he might uh, he might go ahead and take a cut at that one. 2-2, two -two, here it comes. Skied in the air. This is shallow. This is on the infield. Third baseman and shortstop come together. Third baseman makes the play. That's Wollers as the ball... Started to curve back towards shortstop's area, but Anthony is out on the high pop-up to end the sixth inning. No runs for the Hawks. We head to the seventh. Iowa four, Loris one. Back after this, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hey, everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now kids can eat free. When you're in the Eastern Iowa area, be sure to visit and connect with the official local business partners of the Iowa Hawkeyes. The Hotel at Kirkwood Center, Iowa's premier luxury hotel. The Jill Armstrong team of Skogman Realty, the area's premier realtor, and Options Exteriors, your preferred local roofing and exterior company. The Hotel Kirkwood, named the Corridor Business Journal's 2022 Best Banquet and Event Venue, and awarded the AAA Four Diamond Award for Lodging. To make reservations, visit the Hotel at Kirkwood.com or call 877-751-5111 for more information.
Top of the seventh inning here in Iowa City. Iowa leading Loris four to one. Duhawks come to the plate seven, eight, nine. New Hawkeye pitcher is Jacob Henderson, junior righty, six feet tall. Gilbert, Arizona. 30 appearances in his career, just under four ERA. Finally getting our look at Henderson, who's been loosening and warming in the bullpen in what feels like almost every game so far this year, but making his season debut today. Yeah, Hendo's thrown, a, uh, uh, thrown an early season's worth of pitches in the bullpen, but hasn't made it out to the mound, and happy for him. He's... Uh, I, I like everybody on this team, but but Hendo is one of my favorite human beings on here. Um, yeah, I always have. You know, last year had a lot of great conversations with him on the bus in the hotel rooms, and sure. you know, kind of quizzing him on how he got to uh, how he got to Iowa last year. Um, you know, being from Arizona, how does an Arizona kid decide that Iowa was the place he wanted to go play baseball? And uh, um, his mom had graduated high school from from Dubuque, so. Um, he, he might have a little uh, a little knowledge and recognition of Loris here as well. Pransky leads things off. Henderson gets him to swing at it and miss it. 0 and 1. And Jacob, you know, last year was one of uh, you know Ben Butel was was obviously the the main uh, firefighter for for Coach Heller, but uh, Jacob was another one of those guys. Casey Day, um, Luke Llewellyn were the guys that that when he got in trouble had a dirty inning. Um, you know, he, he goes to Jacob because he he really he, he knows and trusts that that he's going to get strikes and and going to get a, a a good outing. Redshirt junior, so he's been around. Counts one and two as he's got Pransky down. Goes with an 85 mile an hour fastball to get him to swing through it. Uh, Jacob's not going to overpower you with stuff, but as you've seen uh, in the warm up pitches and here in in uh, uh, the first couple pitches to this hitter, just a good mix, a lot of good sharp breaking ball and a lot of spin. Comes the one two just outside. Christensen tried to frame it. We see Henderson probably late in games, maybe in a setup spot every once in a while, but uh, late and an inning or two. Yeah, you could see him be. You could be him be a seven eight guy. 2-2, two, two, swing and a miss. That pitch was in the other batter's box, and uh, Pransky went after it, and he's out number one. But again, he's probably getting you know, 16, 18 inches of movement on that. A, you know, big slow <laughs> thing that looks like you want to you want to just clobber it. Next thing you know, you can't reach it anymore. But yeah, Jacob will be kind of that guy that hey, you've got a, a couple run lead, or you're down by a couple runs, and and your job is to keep the game right where it is, and either let us come back. Yeah. Or until we can get to Will to close it out at the end. Hold um, guy. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to be a great hold guy through the season. And, you know, he closed a little bit last year, too, as, as the Hawks kind of did that by committee for the most part, uh, especially when Dylan Nedved was was starting. Well, he's dealing now as he's got Sandoval down in the count. 0 and two really going with that off speed. He's starting it outside and it keeps going outside away from the right handed hitters and Loris just has not adjusted to that at all. Yeah, that was a nasty knee buckler more at him and kind of broke it to the middle of the plate. Another good one there where he starts it at the middle and breaks it away, which is just impossible to reach. That time Sandoval lays off it. So the counts one and two with one out top of the seventh Iowa four to one over Loris. Yeah, when you when you have the kind of you, you can have a lot of uh, silly looking swing and misses with Jacob's stuff. Ooh. Ooh, that one just missed. He started that one inside and broke it back to the middle, but I think it was a bit high, so it's two and two. That's what I'm going to go with. That one <laughs> was just up a little bit, and especially when, when Christensen's catching it belt high. It probably came across the plate a little bit higher than that. Yeah, Two-two, here it comes. Just high again. Count is full. 86 there from Henderson, so he's... Working closer to it, but that was a nice hard pitch right there. Three balls and two strikes with one out in the top of the Laura seventh. Henderson is set. Here it comes. Inside. Ball four. We lost him. Loris has a base runner in the seventh. Yeah, Jacob a little angry with himself there, letting the letting the hitter off the hook there. But again, he didn't miss any of those pitches by very far. Um, you know, both the one two and the two two pitch were were right on the upper edge, probably hit his spots, and, and a good piece of discipline hitting to, to stay away from pitches you couldn't do anything with. Bottom of the order, Gruber. First pitch from Henderson. Called strike with the 
off speed on the outside corner, 74 miles an hour. You know, we've talked about his speed uh, where, okay, it's mid to upper 80s, and then that off speed is mid 70s. It's not the fastest, but he's throwing it hard, and there is a difference there. Yeah. A one pitch is inside, almost hit him. It's one and one. And again, the, the – uh, you, you know, the most important part of, of an off-speed pitch, so any spinner, curveball, change-up, slider, any of those, is that you have a difference because if the hitter can sit on it, even if you fool them, if the, there's no, no speed difference, they're still going to be able to stick with it and hit it. But when all of a sudden you have a, a 10, 12-mile-an-hour variance, if you fool somebody, they aren't going to be able to regroup and make good, solid contact. Right. Two balls and a strike to Gruber. Henderson trying to find the zone. Runner on first with one out in the top of the seventh. Jacob's ready. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Got him to swing over the top of that fastball. Maybe had a little two-seam dive to it. Just a little drop there at the end. Gruber missed it. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, you saw a little bit different, uh, you know, almost a little bit of cutter action there. And, and it lost a little bit of mile an hour and got a little bit more movement. 2-2, two, two, just outside. Full count again. Let's see what Henderson's got. Got to bring it into the zone here. Yeah, a lot of fooling around, and all of a sudden we walk him, and the, the tying runs at the yeah. plate. That's Avoid a... that. Let's get a ground ball. How about that? Three balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch from Henderson. Runner goes. Doesn't matter. Ball four. Yeah, that's the top of the order now coming up. And, and this, what are we, two for three here with... Uh, with our hitter now. Yeah, good group of Loris fans behind their dugout on the third base side. And they make some noise with McCallum coming up. And we'll talk, uh, we'll have a mound visit here as Coach McGrath will talk with the Hawkeye infielders and Henderson. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for men and women in the United States. Don't let any heart condition go unnoticed or undiagnosed. Whether it's a routine checkup or a complex procedure, you want expert care from specialists who know your heart condition inside and out. University of Iowa Heart and Vascular Center advanced trained cardiologists use state-of-the-art diagnostic tools and offer highly advanced, minimally invasive treatment options. It's heart care that doesn't only change lives, it saves them. Make an appointment today at uihc.org slash hbc or call 319-356-7102. Coming up in just a few minutes, the Iowa Hawkeye men's basketball team is at Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana. The Hawks and the Hoosiers coming up in just about five minutes. Keep our eye on that one. Iowa beat Indiana in dramatic fashion earlier in the year. He's trying to get a crucial road win late. All right, here's the top of the order of McCallum. First pitch to him is outside. So this is the first look at a lefty for Henderson this afternoon. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Iowa four, Loris one. They've got runners on first and second with one out. 1-0 one -oh pitch inside, ball two. Boy, it almost painted the corner, really caused uh, McCallum to jump away from it there, but it wasn't quite as far inside as he uh, as he projected, but he's ahead 2-0 oh now. Anderson's got to come through with a strike. Here's the pitch. There, nope. Ball three. Inside, maybe a bit low as well. Down low, I think. Okay. From uh, Looked like uh, Christensen might have had to kind of trap it down, so it was a really hard pitch for him to frame, give the umpire a good look. Here's a 3-0. Oh. Ball four. Four pitch walk, and the bases are loaded for Loris in the top of the seventh. Three straight walks here to make things interesting, and we'll see their best hitter by average in Dakota Church. The catcher, he is 0 for 2 today, but he's reached twice, reached on an error in the first, and then walked in the third. Grounded out in the fifth. We could use a ground ball here. First pitch is a breaking ball called strike. Good answer back there from Hendo to come get the uh, come get the strike and try to get back ahead of a hitter. He all of a sudden gave the Dewhawk dugout a little yeah, energy. I was just going to mention that a lot of chatter coming from over there. The 0-1 swing and a miss. 0-2. Really important for Christensen too. You know, Jacob throws a lot of balls that break. Throws a lot of balls that you know might bounce. So Christensen's got to do a good job here keeping the ball in front of him with the runner on third. 0-2 called 
third strike. It was a late call, but we got him for the second out of the inning. What a what a way to battle back after a four pitch walk to get the strikeout. We'll take a uh, station identification break. Let's pause 10 seconds for station ID. This is Hawkeye Baseball. First pitch to Cohen is a called strike. It's 0-1 with two away in the Duhawks' seventh. They've got the bases loaded. Iowa leading 4-1. Henderson trying to get out of a jam here. Next pitch on its way to Cullen. Swing and a miss. Got him with that outside breaking ball, 0-2. Good uh, good response from, from Jacob after getting himself in a little bit of trouble here. Um, he's come back and, and uh, thrown five straight strikes. See, how he, see what he uses for an out pitch. No balls and two strikes. The pitch from Henderson just low and outside. Good job there by Cohen to lay off it. That was a good pitch, though, too, from Henderson. Yeah, went with the breaking ball that was, uh, you know, it wasn't a strike, but it was it was one that had a look for a long time, and Christensen stuck with it, made the catch, but Cohen stayed away from it. One, two's popped up, fouling out of play to the right side. Do it again at one and two. Bases loaded for Loris. Dramatic part of the game right here with Iowa leading by three. Yeah, we didn't need to add any drama to today. No. We, we were doing just fine. Yeah. I would jump to a 4 nothing lead after two, but haven't done much offensively since then. One ball, two strikes with two outs. The pitch outside, and it gets by Christensen all the way back to the wall. A run will score. Yeah, now you've got, now you have the tying run down at second because of the pass ball. At least I'm going to assume that's going to go as a pass ball. Christensen's got to, got to make that catch. Uh, the fastball was outside, but it wasn't uh, it wasn't that, the mid. They are that far out of play. Initial scoring is a wild pitch, but boy, that's tough. Two balls, two strikes from Henderson. Swing and a miss. Got him with that same breaking ball on the outside corner. And so able to limit the damage there, but Loris gets one. We will stretch things out here at Dwayne Banks. Bottom of the seventh coming up right after this. Iowa four, Loris two. Tight ball game in Iowa City. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah. Hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo. Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. Getting into the late innings in Iowa City. Iowa leading Loris in the bottom of the seventh, four to two. Got to answer the Duhawks. They've scored the last two in this game. New pitcher is Jack Carr making his second appearance of the season. He's a right-handed pitcher operating out of the windup. First pitch to Brennan DeRiggy is a called strike on the outside corner. Uh, Carr. Has thrown one inning this season. Hasn't given up a hit or a run. He has walked one as DeRiggy slaps this one foul to the right side, 0-2. Yeah, one of the things when we talked to Coach Heller Saturday with the LSU win, you know, scored early, went into a little lull, but then really kept in a good, aggressive approach. One of the things he's probably not going to be happy about today. 0-2 is lined to the shortstop on a one-hop, knocks it down, throw to first late, and DeRiggy is on. We'll see how they score that. What do you think, John? I think that one's well, I think that was knocked down. Hard hit. I think they'll give him a hit. I think I'd give it an error. You're tough. You're tough on the fielders. <laughs> that ball was right to him. I know. 
And, and so, uh, again, he, he just, even if he can keep it corralled when he, when he puts it down, but yeah, they did, they did give Brennan a hit, which uh, I'm sure Brennan from a batting average standpoint loves it and appreciates He'll it. He'll take it. Here's Sam Peterson. But to kind of finish that other thought, you know, the, the, the approach was to kind of continue going. And even against K-State, that was the nice part of, of kind of hit throughout. Hawks tonight haven't been quite as good at that. The approaches in the middle innings haven't been as good as they were right at the beginning. And, and so that's something that, uh, you know, you've got a few new faces on the lineup. And so it'll be kind of a learning experience for those guys, too, to stay locked in, um, you know, for the whole time. One ball, one strike to Peterson. Line drive, base hit in the left field. Good piece of hitting there by Peterson. Dorigi rounds second hard, but he'll stay there. And it wouldn't surprise me if there had been a little bit of uh, um, aggressive pep talk in the dugout because both hitters here have come out. And you know, Dorigi really, really hit a rope up the middle there, and, and Petey turned on one and, and made good solid barrel contact there. So both, That's a good point. both approaches here have been uh, much more aggressive and much more what... Uh, Coach Heller would want to see. Yeah, we'll see Honar here with runners on first and second. Nobody out in the bottom of the seventh. Maybe some small ball. Honar squares to bunt. Pitch is way outside. So Sam pulls it back and watches it go by for ball one. I know your general tendency here is to is to push it down the third base line, but then you watch where the first baseman's playing, and he's not even being when he's squared there. He's not aggressive at all. They're leaving it completely to the pitcher to cover that side of the of the field. Check on Dorigi at second with a spin and a toss. He's back in there safely. And I got to see a Chase Mosley on deck. Got a good bat. Try to advance these runners. Carr looks in for the sign. He's got it from the Duhawk catcher. And a steal is on. The pitch is a called strike. The throw down to third is not in time. That is an excellent slide from Dorigi going to the outside part of the bag, making the tech because the ball probably beats him there on the front. But because he goes to the outside part of the bag, he makes the makes the tag have to go longer and swipe it all the way out to him. That'll bring the Loris infield in with Honar still at the plate. One one pitch to him is in the dirt, two and one. So We'll take it how he got there, right? And and with Dorigi getting to third, didn't get the bunt down. That's okay because now Sam's still in there with a 2-1 count and nobody out and a chance to do some damage here in the bottom of the seventh. I was just a bit surprised on that pitch before that Sam pulled the bunt back. Maybe it was maybe it was just an act. Yeah, I think it was a run and bunt. I think it was a, if you like it, bunt it. But otherwise, I think the runners were – because they were moving. There was no question mm -hmm. about it. 2-1 and swung on and missed. Now 2-2, two and two, so Honar has to protect with two strikes. Nobody out in the inning. Iowa up only two on Loris in the bottom of the seventh, trying to drive in a couple here. Infield in for the Dewhawks. Left fielder's exceptionally deep. Big gap in left center field. Just poke one over that shortstop's head, Sam. The 2-2 two -two floats low, blocked nicely by the catcher. Briefly gets away, but he's got it. Counts full. Base is empty over there at first with Mosley on deck. Nobody out in the seventh. Did they switch that now? So they've got the yeah, they read Dorigi went. This one's in the air to left, foul and out of play. They switched the Dorigi to an error now, so. Did they? Yeah. All right. See, I'm not hard. <laughs> Find a way to get Sam on here in the bottom of the seventh. Carr looks in for the sign. He's got the ball his lower back. He's got it. Here comes a 3-2. Check swing. They send it down. He went. Send it down for the appeal, and Honar is out on strikes. He was halfway down to first, thought he walked. Yeah, I, th those are hard. I mean, where we're sitting, those are hard calls to critique one way or the other just because it looks like uh, it looks like he holds up, but those things happen in such a quick flash that that bat snaps across the plate and back. Well, we'll have a change here as Blake Guerin will come in and pinch hit in the uh, bottom of the seventh inning. 
All right, let's see what Blake's got. Blake is a six foot six, 280 pound first baseman for the Hawks. Ranked as the number one player to come out of the state of Minnesota from Shoreview. And the freshman, let's see what he's got with runners on second and third one out. And if you can hear from his walk-up music, he might be the most entertaining guy on the team as well. Well, as we've traveled uh, to start the season, he, he's certainly a character, isn't he? he he's, got, he's got that description down to a T. Brief pause here as Loris will have a mound visit. When corn grows fuel, Iowans win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag Iowans win, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. Underway in Bloomington this evening, Iowa's out to a hot start, leading the 15th ranked Hoosiers 16 to 5. You mean we carried our three point shooting All right. to Bloomington? Yeah, Chris has got eight points for the Hawks, a couple of rebounds. Four minutes played in Bloomington, Iowa 16 to 5. Good start for the men's hoops team no that'd be a big time win wouldn't it on the road yeah that would uh i was probably in the ncaa tournament but that would probably keep them out of some silly play in game sure. or uh might even get them start getting them ramped out of that eight nine slot yeah get us out of there please all right runners on second and third bottom of the seventh garen is the batter he's a big righty first pitch to him on the ground to short scooped up there bobbled the only play is the first where he gets out garen but derigi will score on the back side Leads up to three now. It's five to two, Hawks. Yeah, that's uh, you know that's an important RBI ground out. I mean, you just you know, Loris had been kind of nickel and diamond, and you know, get one, get one. Um, you know, to, to answer the one they got was they cut the lead to four to two. That's a it's an important to kind of stretch that back out to three so that just any base runner doesn't cause you a problem. Still got another one out there at third is Peterson. Here's Frazier, the batter. First pitch to Braden. Pitch drops low and away, ball one. Yeah, the Hawks would take a wild pitch or a Braden Frazier. You know, he lined out hard to the, I guess the left fielder ended up uh, ended up dropping it, but good solid barrel contact there. Ooh, 1-0 pitch, high and tight. Came in at 68 miles an hour, but enough to bend Frazier back a little bit. 2-0, and hitters count. The Hawkeye left fielder. How about a base hit, Braden? Here comes a 2-0. Lifted in the air, fouling out a play to the right. Yeah, big gap in right center field as the center fielder's got him well shaded over. Um, I remember a home run Braden hit last year to right field. Uh, so Braden's got good pop both directions. Off to a good start this season. Two balls and a strike. The pitch, low and outside, good block there by the catcher, Church, to stop that from getting to the backstop. Three balls and a strike to Frazier with two outs, runner on third. A lot of confidence in his ability there because he just kind of reached out. 3-1, lined into right. Right fielder moves back, and it's over his head. It one-hops the wall. Frazier's at second. He'll stop there with an RBI double. That ball kept going and going and going. It was a good effort out there in right, but a two, uh, rather an RBI double for Frazier, and it's 6-2. to two. Yeah, you know, just talking about how Frazier's got a – Got a good move out that way, and you know, I think that's still Di Benedetto out there, and tried to make a diving play, and actually did a really nice job getting back to his feet and getting the ball in, and, and keeping Frazier at second. Peterson scores. Iowa six-two in the bottom of the seventh. Here's Christensen with Frazier at second. Still more to be done if the Hawks can keep the inning going. First pitch to Christensen called strike on the outside corner. That's 66 miles an hour. It felt like it too. Just kind of cruising up over those rolling hills. Yeah. Be a good place for Christensen's first hit and first RBI. Let's see if you just talked it into existence there. Carr has got the sign that he likes, the 0 1. Low and in. It's 1 and 1. I talked Frazier's popped to right field into existence yeah, there. You, you know what? That, that takes us back to Texas. You did a pretty good job down there calling a couple of shots. So you're off to a good start, too, John. Thank you. Sometimes you get lucky. One ball and a strike to the Hawkeye catcher with two outs. In the seventh, here's the pitch. Breaking ball, downstairs, two and one. And plus, over the course of three hours, if you say enough silly stuff, some of it's bound to happen. It's got to stick at some point, right? Exactly. <laughs> 
we start keeping, I'm the one giving you credit. If we start keeping my batting average, it could get a little <laughs> gross. But otherwise. We just highlight the successes. That's our job. 2-1. <laughs> here it comes. Driven into center. Slicing away from the center fielder, but he tracks it down. Good piece of hitting by Christensen, but it's caught by McCollum out there in center. All right, we've played seven innings in Iowa City. Iowa adds to their lead. It's 6-2. to two. Back right after this, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. We all love a good win. Catching up with friends, saving money at the pump, soaking up the perfect Iowa day, sitting down to a really, really good meal. These are the everyday delights that make us smile. These are the moments that connect us all as Iowans. And these are the wins that, more often than not, start with Iowa's farm families and the crop they're growing. Because when corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Learn more about how to share your own wins at iowacorn.org backslash Iowans win. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Top of the eighth inning in Iowa City. Thanks for tuning in to our broadcast of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball this afternoon. New pitcher on the mound for the Hawks is Luke Llewellyn. Louie gets into the game, second appearance of the season, credited with a win on the year. Uh, one inning, one hit. He walked one. Opponents are hitting 333 against him. Got that nice over-the-top delivery that comes down in on a slide, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, we talk about kind of arm angle, and, and Louis' arm slot really is about 1130, almost noon or midnight. He is, he is way over the top coming right in. A little bit unique there, but, boy, he can really, can really snap some of those pitches off. Another one of those that's a hard fastball, too, right? You know, that it, it'll it get up there, but it's thrown hard. And, that, and like we've talked about that difference a little bit uh, today. Yeah, Louie's going to come in. It'll be 92, 93, 94. Um, we did. We got Ben Wilmis out in uh, out in right field. And someone Good. knew they probably wouldn't. Probably weren't going to put Garen out no, there. I, but. I, I don't think I don't think Blake would have been out there in right. We'll we'll put Ben out there. Top of the eighth, Iowa six, Loris two. Here's Llewellyn against Rogers. Rogers is the guy that stands super close to the plate. From the left side, first pitch from Luke is high, ball one. Yeah, I thought maybe it was, uh, maybe he changed his approach a little bit when a left-hander was up there, but now he's, uh, he just gets right on the plate there and says it's mine. Half swing is hit on the ground to second where Honar picks it up, quickly gets it over to Derigi at first, out number one. Yeah, a little check swing there, didn't really want to do it, but... Yeah, kind of that same thing when you when you're setting that far on the plate and you do a partial swing your bat pretty much drags right through the zone yeah one away quickly in the eighth here's Dolores right fielder to Benedetto next pitch to him is just downstairs a little bit inside too want to know he got it up there about 90 again a little bit a little bit cooler maybe not as quite as much work as he'll have later in the year he'll He'll start to stretch out and like that go. right there at 93. Yeah, he, swing and a miss. It might not take that far into the season for him to find it either. So well, and pops the mitt one and one. Next one on its way. Fouled back towards us in the screen. One and two. Yeah, Luke at one point last year had kind of become the closer is he, he really shut down uh we we're in california the uc irvine games um did a nice job at uc irvine and san diego state comes a one two this is a breaking ball that is high llewellyn another one of those guys that has been warmed up this season and, and just hasn't quite gotten in every time that he's he's warmed up good to see him in there today two two downstairs three and two I got another guy that, that Coach Heller's going to trust, been around the program, 
Uh, he graduates in May. We were talking about that uh, in the airport the other day. Um, so, you know, graduates here here coming up, but, but wants to have a, a good, strong season here. 3-2 pitch is high. Ball four. Think about with uh, Llewellyn, when he misses the zone, it's not really going to be horizontal, right? It's going to be the vertical. It's going to be high or low because it's, like you said, started at midnight, 12 o'clock, straight down. Yeah, based on based on his delivery angle, it's going to be hard for him to miss sideways very often. You know, it's going to be, it'll be missed down low, miss up high. And not that he doesn't, he isn't going to have variance left and right, but a lot of it'll be, a lot of it'll be vertically. Pinch hitter for Loris in the eighth is Justin Gutierrez. Right-handed hitter, swings at the first pitch and fouls it out of play to the right. Runner on first with one away in the Loris eighth. Iowa leading 6-2. Get a hard ground ball here to maybe start a double play. Llewellyn's 0-1. Breaking ball just low, 1-1. One one. That's a pretty good pitch there. A good piece of hitting. You know, again, we talked about it. You mentioned it earlier. You know, you sit there long enough, and um, it's not easy to come up and pinch hit in this role, but uh, good job there. In the air, right center field. Wilmus is camped underneath it, and he's got it for the second out of the inning. Gutierrez is put away. And Ben's another one of those guys. You know, he can do a little bit of everything. He's, uh, you know, he, Probably an infielder by trade. He, you know, in the fall he became a uh, uh, put on the uh, put on the catching tools and kind of learned how to do that a little bit. And and uh, now when the time comes, they'll throw him out in the uh, throw him out in the outfield. Another pinch hitter for Loris, Cody Sunny, freshman, left-handed hitter. Llewellyn misses downstairs to him to kick off the at-bat. We're on first with two away. Llewellyn ready with the 1-0. This is a high chopper to the left side. Tello picks it up foul. Say so that was going to be a heck of a tough play with the way that thing was moving and spinning. Yep. He threw it on the run anyway over toward DeRiggy, but had been called foul beforehand. No balls and two strikes. I believe it's one and one, actually, with two outs. This one's tapped foul in the box. Good at bat here. Two strikes and two outs on Sonny. Llewellyn can get a strikeout to end this inning. Set with the pitch. Here it is. High. The eyes. You know, sometimes it's a good setup pitch again. You get something up. You know, you kind of been fouling off a couple pitches, so you change his eye level a little bit. Just you know, maybe get him just to touch off balance. Like to see a change up or something out of Llewellyn. This pitch hard and high, though. Two and two. Yeah, brought that one inside. I suppose now you can, you could maybe sneak that backdoor breaking ball in. See if you can paint the outside with a breaking ball after you've got him up, up and in. Yeah, fouled in the box again. This is a good at bat by Sonny, the freshman, battling Llewellyn hard in the eighth inning. Iowa leading six-two. Hawks got a couple of runs in the bottom of the seventh to extend their lead. Yeah, that's, those runs were big because now instead of the tying run. There's a ground ball to short. Seegers is there, flips it to second for the force out to retire the side. Good job by Llewellyn to hold the Dewhawks at two runs overall. Scoreless inning in the top of the eighth. We'll head to the bottom half of it. Iowa six, Loris two. Back after this, listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, we want to help keep you safe around power lines and electrical equipment. Always assume a power line is energized, even if it's on the ground. To avoid the risk of an accidental shock or electrocution, avoid touching a power line with anything. 
And when you see high voltage warnings on transformers and substations, stay away. We care about you and your safety. Get more tips at midamericanenergy.com. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Ah, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? <laughs> yeah. Blammo! Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. John Evans, John Leo in the broadcast booth at Dwayne Banks Field. Bottom of the eighth inning. I was six. Loris, two. Dewhawks have a new pitcher on the mound. Is Peter Coakley. He's a freshman right-handed pitcher. And it uh, would appear to be his first appearance of the season. So Coakley in there to pitch for the Dewhawks. A little surprised. I thought we might see the Dylan Peters pitched. Uh, or I'm sorry, Ethan Peters pitched last year here. Um, came in, closed it out, um, did a really nice job uh, as Pasco started, and uh, Peters came in and finished it up, and and was was really good. And thought we might see uh, thought we might see him for an inning, but uh, at this point, six to two in the bottom of the eighth. I really hope we don't see him in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah, no kidding. Iowa leading by four. If we play a bottom of the ninth, that means uh, that's a problem. Some bad news in the top half, but. Seegers will lead things off here, watching the first pitch go by. Called strike, outside corner. Seegers entered in the sixth, where he grounded out to the second baseman. Fouls this one to the right side, and out of play. No balls and two strikes to Michael. Yeah, and this is, you know, we've talked about this a lot this weekend. Spot Michael's not uncomfortable in. Ooh, watches that one go right by his eyes, one and two. You can see the catcher kind of flash that, that he wanted it up, and mm -hmm. he got his wish, but not in a place where Michael's going to swing at it. Typically well-disciplined. The one-two on its way home, low and outside, two and two. But you see that there, that's kind of the setup pitch. You throw it up high, you get him where, okay, now I'm, I'm standing up a little higher and you throw that breaking ball down. But neither one were, were executed as well as he wants it to to really, to really make Michael bite. Michael can get something on the 2-2, called third strike outside corner. And Seegers is down on strikes to start the eight. Mm. I guess the tricky way is you change it high, you change it low, and then you come back to the middle and you're there. Seager's a little bit surprised on the called strike, but I think the as the umpire's gotten colder as the game's gone along, I think the strike zone's gotten expanded just a little bit. It's been very consistent and very good, though. Here's Tello. Swings at the first pitch, sends it past Coach Heller down there at third. Foul. Smart play from Coach Heller there to Olay that one. <laughs> left fielder didn't want to chase it but kind of needed to chase it but then wasn't chasing it but wanted to make sure they didn't pitch it while he was chasing it. <laughs> yeah, it gives a little bit of a delay. Buys pitcher a couple extra seconds, huh? No balls in the strike to Tello. He swings at this one, fouls it to the right side. Over the heads of the fans in attendance and the bleachers over there to the right. A good two for four day for Raider and reached on an error. Um, on that hot shot down the third baseline. So could be three for four. Yeah, takes the next pitch outside and low, one and two. We're glad that Raiders, a Hawkeye, found him from out in California. Coach Heller really high on this Hawkeye third baseman. One ball, two strikes. Here it comes. Same spot. Raider lays off two and two. Yeah, celebrated a birthday. Was that our LSU win? That, it that was. was the birthday present? Mm-hmm. 
It's a pretty it's good, hard, yeah, pretty good hard birthday present. It's hard to beat that one. 2-2 two, two to Tello. Line drive past the diving shortstop. A base hit for Raider. His third single of the game. Good job, Raider. Here's yeah. Keaton Anthony now. Yeah, Keaton's probably going to want to... Uh, like we talked about before, the, the Kansas State game, you know, he had a couple pop-ups and then really adjusted. You know, he popped up in his last at bat and was kind of frustrated. So wouldn't wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit different approach here. Wind blowing out to left still. Keaton shrugs off the first pitch. Ball one. And he's two for four. So, you, you know, it's like, oh, geez, terrible day. Two for four, home run. <laughs> Keaton takes this one 2-0 now, low and outside. The breaking ball for uh, Coakley is not there yet. He's, he's missed it away from right-handed hitters in his outing today. Bottom of the eighth inning, Iowa 6, Loris 2. He's got 10 hits on the day. Keaton grounds this one past the shortstop into left field. Another base hit for the Hawkeyes, this time a single for Anthony. And boy, here comes Brennan Derigi now, who's been seeing the ball really well for the Hawks the past few days. Yeah, this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good spot for Brennan with two on and just one out. You know, another guy two for four with two home or with a home run today. Does quite a bit of damage with two runners on. He's got a had that big three-run homer against LSU. He comes up with runners on first and second. One out, first pitch just outside, away from Derigi. Outfield is respecting Brennan. They're deep, especially in right. 1-0 pitch to him, catches the outside corner, 1-1. One and one. That's a tough pitch to hit. Somewhere in there, the book on him must say he's opposite field in the uh, in the power department in the outfield but boy we've seen some strong power on the pole side but their center field is shaded well, there you one go. one clobbered opposite field carrying well into left center center fielder is nearby left fielder is there too but they neither one can catch it it one hops the wall here comes Tello he'll score Anthony will get the stop sign at third and hit to the deepest, one of the deepest parts of the park there for Derigi out in left center. He's on with an RBI double at seven to two. Yeah, that was one center fielder ran a long ways for it, but um, you yeah, know the wind's still just pushing it. Left fielder maybe didn't get, might have been shaded a little bit more toward the line, and so even with the center fielder being onto that side of of home plate, still had a long, long way to run. Had a little collision. Good to see both of them up and up and around kind of hard to track the ball for us there to see if they catch it beast as you saw the tangle of bodies you could see the ball kind of roll away from the pile yeah, great effort by the outfielders out there infield will come in for loris now with runners on second and third and one out in the hawkeye eighth here's sam peterson first pitch to pd is low and outside blocked nicely by the catcher there Yeah, good block way to keep it in front of him. Keep Anthony down at third base. Base hit bring in two runs, you'd think. Derigi with a massive lead at second. 1-0 pitch to Petey. Inside, ball two. Yeah, with, this, with the infield in, and then particularly with the shortstop playing a little bit more kind of on, on a hard pull side, that's going to let Derigi take a long, long walk off second base. Hitters count for Peterson, the 2-0. Inside ball three. Freshman Coakley struggling to find the strike zone after he struck out Seegers to begin the eighth inning. It's 3-0 to Peterson with Honar on deck. Here's the pitch. Called strike at the letters, 3-1. and one. You know, We've really seen... Yeah, you get into a bullpen game, you never quite know what you're going to get as far as quality, you know, because you, you bring in eight different guys, they all have to be on. Right. 3-1 pitch, just outside, maybe a bit low. And so Peterson is on with the walk. The bases are loaded for the Hawks in the bottom of the eighth inning. But the, the Duhawk pitchers, that, 
That is the fifth walk, but it doesn't really feel like that. I mean, it feels like the control's been good. Uh, they've been around the plate a lot and hasn't, haven't really gotten where it was ball four, ball eight, ball 12. They've really done a nice job. I've been impressed by them. Here's Honar, rips one down the line and right, base hit, one run scores in Anthony. Here comes another. It's cut off, at least knocked down, a two RBI single for Honar who blasts one into right field and he's on. It's nine to two now, the Hawks are starting to pile it on. Nice nice piece of hitting there from from Sam, pulled it, uh, pulled it sharply through there and yeah, you know, the first baseman was in normal position, but it was just so well hit that uh, got past him before he had time to react. Nine two, the Hawks have put up three in this eighth inning. Here's Ben Wilmus. His first at bat of the game, first pitch to him, outside corner called strike. And I don't think Ben has an official plate appearance. I think he got hit in his only two plate appearances so far this season. He stands in with a chance to give the Hawks a little extra cushion. The 0-1, hard swing, fouls it to the right side, out of play. He's down in the count, 0-2 with one out here in the bottom of the eighth. A good piece of uh, good piece of hitting, good ap aggressive approach here. The last two innings, you know, we talked about how Iowa might have, you know, maybe fell asleep a little bit with the bats there in the middle innings, but really have jumped back up here and and you know, kind of left no doubt here. Wilmus drives this one deep in the air to right center. Center fielder is shading over. McCallum will reach up and grab it. Runner will tag from second to third. That's Peterson. And so runners on the corners with two outs as Wilmis got a hold of it, but not deep enough. Advancing the runner from second to third. Honar stays put at first. Yeah, got a little, uh, got a little bit underneath that one, but uh, good solid contact to advance the runner, and we'll have a pinch hitter here. Here comes Coy Sarsfield, redshirt freshman, 5'8", 165 from Marion. See what Coy can do with runners on the corners. Two outs, bottom of the eighth inning. Iowa 9-2 up on Loris. Honar at first, Peterson at third. First pitch to Sarsfield is a breaking ball outside, ball one. Got Tolman in the on-deck circle. We'll see if he pinch hits and comes into the game or if, he'll, if he doesn't pinch hit, if he'll just stay on the bench. 1-0 is a called strike. High and away from Sarsfield, but it caught the corner, 1-1. One one. Interesting with, with Christensen uh, catching the whole game up to this point. See what Iowa elects to do when we get to the top of the ninth. Sarsfield takes this one. They're going to throw it down to first, a backdoor pickoff attempt. Honar's safe there. Sarsfield's worked the count to 2-1. and one. Coy is a right-handed hitter. If you're going to make that throw down with a runner on third base, you better make it good. And good play by the first baseman to pick up a short hop and not let that ball skip into right field. 2-1 pitch right down the middle. Called strike 2-2. Two two. Just almost felt a little bit maybe unnecessary to try to <laughs> pick off Sam that way. But take it any way you can get, I suppose, if you're Loris. Worth a shot. Two balls and two strikes to Sars Field. Here it comes. Low and outside again, blocked by Church behind the plate. Very good block yeah. there as the pitcher kind of spiked that one on him. And that was, boy, I don't know, that was 54-foot uh, pitch. That wasn't even particularly close. So good job there. Like to see Coy be able to put one into play here. Three balls and two strikes with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. Hawks have plated three runs to this point in this inning. Next pitch to Sarsfield. Whoa, it hit him. Inside, it got him on the shoulder and he'll drop the bat and sprint down to first base. Base is loaded and we will see Ben Tallman now. On base in your first career at bat though. So take I mean, it. I guess that well I guess technically not his first career at bat. His first career plate appearance. So we'll see what Ben Tallman can do now with the bases loaded and two out here in the eighth inning. Yeah Ben's kind of become the Saturday catcher. You know uh, Cade's been Cade's been Friday, Sunday, and, and the Saturday catcher in, in this lineup is a big deal because yep. that has meant Brody Brecht, who's not an easy guy to catch. 
Allman's done a good job so far this season. Swings at the first pitch, high in the left, but relatively shallow. Left fielder looks up, and he's got it to end the inning. All right, we've played eight. Tallman gave it a ride, but not enough behind it. Leave the bases loaded. Iowa nine, Loris two. We're back for the top of the ninth right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us. Because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. After a cancer diagnosis, it's natural to want to start treatment right away. But first, get a second opinion from a team that specializes in your cancer. I'm Dr. George Wiener, Director of University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. Before you start treatment, you deserve to be confident you have the right diagnosis and know every option available to you. So whether it's with us or somewhere else, get a second opinion. It can change your care and your life. John Evans and John Leo trying to close things down in the top of the ninth inning from Dwayne Banks Field in Iowa City. Iowa 9, Loris 2. It's been a pleasure bringing you Iowa Hawkeye baseball this February afternoon. We flip the calendar and head to March tomorrow. Looking forward to that as the season will really get going. We're in Alabama this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Take on the Southern Jaguars on Friday. New pitcher for the Hawks. We'll try to slam the door on Loris's Will Christofferson. Christofferson making his third appearance. He's 1-0 on the season. He's thrown three innings. He has walked two but struck out four. Hasn't given up a hit yet. Christofferson uh, is the closer for the Hawks uh, this year. Yeah, I, I think I mentioned this. Uh, I might have mentioned this when he came into the LSU game the other day. You know, there's not a lot of guys that... Uh, that other baseball players are going to stop and watch just throw a bullpen, but but Will's one of those guys. His stuff is, um, it, it's exciting. It, you know, he's got a he's got a big fastball. You know, kind of gets it into the mid 90s. But boy, his his spinning stuff is really really top shelf. And um, you know, if we can keep him healthy all season, he'll be he'll be a good shutdown closer for the Hawkeyes. Big specimen out there too, tall. And bulky a little bit, too. Uh, got a good, strong build. Starts ahead on Vince Polizzi, the freshman pinch hitter here. 0-1 is the count. Right-handed hitter. Christofferson set in the pitch. Breaking ball high and tight. 1-1. One and one. Yeah, good news for Vince and uh, his first at-bat here in Iowa City. This is the best breaking stuff he's going to see all year. Right. So if he can stay in here, get a good knock, he'll be all right. One and one pitches swung on and missed one and two. Yeah, you watch Will come out there, and you know you're thinking, okay, here, here comes the here comes the ninety something fastball, and he starts you off with three breaking balls. Make it four, as there's a swing and a miss. Polizzi goes down. Good start for Christofferson to start the ninth. As we mentioned, uh, I will be in Mobile, Alabama this weekend. The South Alabama Invitational, Iowa and Southern will kick things off on Friday noon for the first pitch. Swing and a miss from Brian Park, their pinch hitter. He's a freshman, right-handed hitter. Yeah, we might get short sleeve weather this weekend. Yeah, hope so. We're up here in our winter coats. Well, you got a sweatshirt on. I. I'm not going to tell you how many layers I have on underneath this. There you this. go. That is your coat, isn't it? Yep. No I, ball. I, go, I go a lot of layers. Yeah. No balls and two strikes. Christofferson set the pitch. Called third strike. Nice breaking ball. Christofferson That's knew it, too, right. before the ump even called it. He was turning around, taking his lap around the mound. Two away. Yeah, Christofferson kind of knew he had him fooled there, and he wanted no part of him here. So we'll have, have a final hitter here, and or final pinch hitter here, and see if... Uh, Will can close it out. J.D. Medham is up. 
Christofferson has done a nice job. Efficient first pitch to Metem. There's that breaking ball called strike. Yeah, I know these guys are all younger and more athletic than I am, but I don't know how you hit that pitch when you watch it coming in. <laughs> Looks like it's headed right towards you, and he, he throws it hard, too. 0 oh, one pitch on its way home. Check swing. They'll send it down. Yep, he went around 0-2. Oh, so then you, you throw it on the inner half of the plate, and it breaks back over towards the middle. Then you start it outside, and you get him to swing at it like that. Yeah, and as a hitter, you think he's eventually going to throw me a fastball. And doesn't have to. Yeah, he doesn't have to, and it breaks away, and you miss it. No balls and two strikes. Pitch floats outside. Laid off that one. One and two. Loris down to their last chance. Here in the top of the ninth. Iowa leading 9-2. Christofferson is set. The wind in the pitch. Called third strike on the outside corner. And that'll do it. Hawks win. Hawks win. 9-2. Iowa defeats Loris this Tuesday afternoon. Good job start to finish for the Hawks to get the win. Yeah, just uh, a, a good all-around performance. You know, came out, turned the bats on right away, which was which was important. Um, and good pitching from a lot of guys that, uh, that you know you hadn't seen this year, so you, you got a chance to get them to throw. And credit to Loris, they kind of made a made a game of it there in the middle as they kept kept swinging good bats and and tuned the Hawkeyes down. And so then all of a sudden you've got a game and. Hawkeye bats picked back up there at the end and, and closed it out. Iowa 9, Loris 2. We'll begin our post-game coverage right after this. You're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. You probably know that a natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs, but what does a gas leak look or sound like? If you hear a whooshing or hissing sound, see dirt, dust, or water spraying from an area, or you get dizzy or queasy, leave the area immediately, then call 1-800-595-5325 once you're safely away. See midamericanenergy.com for more safety tips. Paid for by the customers of MidAmerican Energy. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Wahlberg and I have some exciting news to share. At Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time. That's why right now, for a limited time, kids eat free every day at all Hy-Vee Wahlburger locations. Kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kid's meal with any purchase of an adult burger, sandwich, or entree salad. Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and Hy-Vee stores where right now kids can eat free. Iowa wins their home opener over Loris 9-2 behind 12 hits and some pretty uh, clean defense behind him and uh, good pitching. It was a bullpen day for the Hawks. We saw a lot of new faces. John, just your first thoughts. Uh, who impressed you the most in this Hawkeye victory? Um, the pitching staff came in, throw strikes. They didn't walk a lot of guys. Um, you know, the, so again, guys that haven't thrown a whole lot. A cold day is not exactly a day you go have a lot of feel in your hands. Had a couple innings there where maybe the, you know the guys weren't as sharp as they wanted to be, but. But as a whole, I thought you know you had you had nine good innings out of the pitching staff, and and you know the the batting approach was was good. But I'll will take uh, I'll take good quality pitching all day. We'll have uh, associate head coach Marty Sutherland coming up, joining us in post game in just a few minutes. Uh, we'll take a break here quickly, and when we come back, we'll recap the game and play highlights of Iowa's 9-2 winner over Loris. Back right after this, you're listening to Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At U.S. Cellular, we think phones are great, but they're not always great for us, because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down. Not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. At Oak Mall, our mission is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, Executive Director. 
We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served Iowa City for more than 55 years. Our team helps residents create home by living our values of caring, respect, enthusiasm, awareness, teamwork, and encouragement. If you're looking at retirement options, visit our website at oakmall.com. We want you to lead life your way. Go Hawks! First midweek game of the season, Iowa wins it over Loris 9-2. The Hawks had 12 hits this afternoon. And they got things going early, three in the first, uh, one run in the second, then were held off for a while until they got two in the seventh and three in the eighth. Loris scored one in the fifth and one in the seventh inning. As we look, uh, Whitlock gets the win for the Hawks. The loss goes to Pasco. Go through the pitching stats first. Whitlock with one inning. Gatilla with one inning and two strikeouts. Wheatley with one inning, gave up two hits. Obermuller one inning with one hit and two strikeouts. Jack Young with two hits, one earned run. Proskovic one inning, one strikeout, only threw nine pitches. Henderson one inning. One run, three walks, three strikeouts. Llewellyn, one inning of no-hit baseball. Christofferson slammed the door with three strikeouts. Time for today's highlights. We'll start things off with a defensive effort to begin the day with a double play. 2-2 on the ground to third. Tello's got it. Goes to second for one. On to first for two. And a double play will end the top of the first inning. Good job, Jack, Jack Whitlock and the Hawkeye defense to... And the minor threat from the Duhawks in the first. Iowa got on the board in the bottom of the first inning. They go back to back, leading off with Keaton Anthony's home run. Anthony drives this one deep to center. Left center now, looking back at the wall, and it is gone. It's a home run for Keaton Anthony. Boom. DeRiggy followed up with a home run of his own. 3-1 sends this one deep to left, carrying well, back at the wall, and gone again. Ha-ha! <laughs> It's a home run for Brennan DeRiggy as the Hawks go back to back in the first. In the second inning, Raider Tello, he kept the scoring going with an RBI single. Iowa three, Loris nothing in the bottom of the second. Here's Raider Tello swinging at the first pitch and over the second baseman's head. Christensen will score and Tello's got an RBI single to make it 4 nothing. Hawks were quiet till the seventh inning when Braden Frazier hit an RBI double. 3-1, lined into right. Right fielder moves back, and it's over his head. It one-hops the wall. Frazier's at second. He'll stop there with an RBI double. That ball kept going and going and going. It was a good effort out there in right, but a two, uh, rather an RBI double for Frazier, and it's 6-2. to two. DeRiggy kept it going in the eighth with an RBI double of his own. 1-1, one, one, clobbered opposite field, carrying well into left center. Center fielder is nearby. Left fielder is there, too, but they neither one can catch it. It one-hops the wall. Here comes Tello. He'll score. Anthony will get the stop sign at third and hit to the deepest, one of the deepest parts of the park there for DeRiggy out in left center. He's on with an RBI double at 7-2. to two. And putting a cherry on the top of the scoring for the Hawks today, Sam Honar with a single there to wrap things up in the eighth. Here's Honar, rips one down the line and right, base hit, one run scores in Anthony. Here comes another, it's cut off, at least knocked down, a two RBI single for Honar who blasts one into right field and he's on, it's nine to two now, the Hawks are starting to pile it on. And then Christofferson in the ninth, slams the door on the Loris Duhawks so that Iowa can win it nine to two. The wind and the pitch. Called third strike on the outside corner, and that'll do it. Hawks win. Hawks win. Nine to two. Iowa defeats Loris this Tuesday afternoon. Good job start to finish for the Hawks to get the win. All right, we're joined now by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach Sutherland, just your thoughts on the on the win over Loris today. Well, I think the biggest thing was to get a bunch of guys out there who hadn't been out there, right, especially on the mound. Um, a bunch of those guys hadn't had a chance to, to get out there against, you know, somebody other than their teammates uh, to this point. So that was the best part, you know, and I thought a lot of those guys did a great job from, 
you know, Jack gave us a clean start, um, you know, Cade, Jazz, you know, just kind of on down the line. We There was a little there was a little traffic there here and there, um, you know, but that's going to happen and worked out in some cases there. But just, just really good to get some of those guys out there. And, um, you know, you certainly, when it's just weekend games, you have a tendency maybe to be in that seven, eight deep wise with the pitching. But when these midweek games come along, more of these guys are going to have to step up and get outs. And, um, you know, early when you don't have that opportunity, you've, you know, those guys just don't have a chance to get out there. So to have a game, um, you know, like Lors come down here uh, to get those guys out there against somebody else is really important. Um, and then same thing offensively, you know, Garrett gets his first career Hawkeye start. You know, he gets on base a couple times. You know, Coy gets his first at bat as a Hawkeye. Um, you know, just certain things like that that you're really happy you can do uh, in this game. And, and um, you know, that, that was the best part of the night. The, the score may be a bit deceiving, 9-2, to two, but it was really uh, start to finish competitive and, and Loris hung around for a while. Just uh, your thoughts on, on the fact that you had to stay locked in for the full nine. Yeah, I mean, they're I think they're picked to, to, to finish pretty high in their league, maybe picked to win it. You know, they got off to a great start last weekend. Um, you know, Coach Heller and I have both known Coach T-Bomb for a long, long time and, and knew we were going to get a really good effort and certainly coming in here last year with the win. So I'm sure, you know, with plenty of those guys who were on that team. So I'm sure they had... Some some confidence coming in here uh, we got off to a really good start we get you know those first four runs I think were all two out runs uh, which was great you know but then we kind of slept walk a little bit in the middle of that inning and never extended it and, and really didn't put a lot of pressure on them so that's the disappointing part the good part is is we kept at it and, and we're able to add some on there late but um, yeah they gave a great effort it's an older team from them and they're going to have a great year and and um, you know just really happy that they that they came down and gave us this game because you know it's a really important again to get those guys out there now a good opportunity down in uh alabama and we'll uh we'll get things underway on friday against southern what do you just see your your preliminary thoughts on our road trip to alabama i, I mean it's going to be difficult competition like always you know uh, southern's got a pretty good pretty good uh, number one pitcher um you know and i know they have some really good offensive players they went down to lsu in a midweek game and it was a four it was i think they were up four nothing through about three or four um, before LSU was able to kind of add add a bunch of runs, but you know they're going to be a, a a really good team. South Alabama certainly coming off a tough weekend against Nebraska, but I think they're they're pretty talented. And then Pepperdine on Sunday, you know we talk about this all the time, and it's it's more about you, right? It's about your energy, your focus, your ability to show up. Um, you know, and and play your game regardless of who the who the you know what the front of the jersey says. It doesn't really matter. You got to go do your thing. And um, you know, tomorrow will be a really good day for us. We get a kind of a normal practice, which will be nice. Instead of trying to scramble out of here, you know, on a Wednesday night, um, we need a good day tomorrow uh, to just kind of lock back in on some things, especially on the offensive side. We need to get our work in, so that'll be good. And and um, yeah, we we'll expect good competition in Al in Alabama. It looks like good weather uh, to this point, which will be great and and uh you know we just got to keep getting better each day all right coach congratulations on the win we'll see you on that flight thursday thanks john all right associate head coach marty sutherland on our post game show from duane banks field where iowa beats loris nine to two we'll wrap up our coverage right after this you're listening to hawkeye baseball from learfield at u.s cellular we think phones are great but they're not always great for us because while they connect us to so much, they can also distract us from, well, us. The us that actually laughs out loud with each other instead of just texting it. That knows being in the same room doesn't always mean being together. So let's find us again by putting our phones down, not forever, just for five. Five days, five hours, even five minutes. Join U.S. Cellular in the Phones Down for Five Challenge. Find out more at uscellular.com slash find us. Knowing that I can make a difference in my patients' lives keeps me motivated every single day. Hi, I'm Dr. Kanya Ferguson at University of Iowa Healthcare. With academic medicine, we see the toughest cases, so we're always innovating. And we bring the best minds together to collaborate, so there's more brain power focused on you. Because that leads to exceptional care for our patients and our community. See how at uihc.org. Iowa wins it over Loris 9-2, improving to 6-1 and one on the season. Getting ready to head down to Alabama now for the South Alabama Invitational. First pitch on Friday is at noon. The Hawkeyes take on 
the Southern University Jaguars. John Evans and I will be down there. We'll have pregame coverage beginning at 1130. Complete performance by the Hawks. A lot of new faces, getting those folks ready for the bulk of the season that's yet to come. Iowa off to a good start, one of their best starts since 2018, beating Loris tonight 9-2. to All right, I'd like to thank our board op back in Jefferson City. Michael, great job today, Michael. Thank you, Michael. For my broadcast partner, John Evans, I'm John Leo saying so long from Dwayne Banksfield, where Iowa beats Loris 9-2. to We'll talk to you on Friday afternoon from... Mobile, Alabama, ready for some more warm weather down there, down south. All right, everybody, thanks for listening to today's broadcast of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. Signing off, saying so long. Have a great rest of your night. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by Homewood and Home 2 Suites, preferred hotel of the Hawkeye Radio Network, Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association, and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. When corn grows Iowa, Iowans win. Oak Knoll, an active life care community. University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. And by Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.